and get to that cross point of 62, uh, where Wall Street and Winter Street, that stretch one block is 4,000 cars a day higher than any other stretch really on the roadway. Um, not something that we wouldn't expect, obviously. Uh, we expect it to be higher. Uh, that kind of puts uh, perspective of what actually could be the possibilities and of the cross-sectional nature of any improvement. Uh, we obviously we have two lanes in each direction right now, um, and kind of in that stretch, no matter kind of what you do, you almost really have to keep in that four four lane um, cross section uh, without really doing something into a negative impact towards operations. Um, the study does look at speed along the roadway. Incidentally, the 85th percentile speed, which is the speed we kind of look at as uh, when we start doing things in terms of uh, the design, um, site distances, et cetera. Um, we're actually pretty in line with why actually the speed limit is out there, which is actually not really surprising for a roadway like Route 28. And that's really because there's a lot of in and out movements of driveways. You might be able to pick up speed in a couple locations, but there's always going to be a car pulling out in front of you from one of the other <laughs> businesses um, or people slowing down or speeding up out of a signal. Um, so in general, I didn't necessarily see speed as an overall issue, although there are cars going more than the speed limit in other locations. There are crashes related to speed, uh, but in an overall sense, it doesn't necessarily seem that that would be the issue that you might want to approach Master UT as a potential improvement. Some of the times we do these studies and one of the improvement recommendations coming out of it is start to looking at the special speed regulation Master UT has on the roadway. All speed limits in Massachusetts, regardless of who road it is, are run by Master UT. Um, so in this roadway where the speed limit's already generally 40 for most of the corridor, 45 <coughs> closer as you get towards the Andover border, um, there's nothing actually in the speed data that would warrant um, the town or Master UT to want to lower or for just raise in that matter. Sometimes you end up doing your studies and the result is raise the speed limit. So in this sense, that actually wouldn't necessarily be the case. It would probably stay exactly how we're looking at it. Um, unless a design came out of it that we physically want the speed to be lower. Um, and that's how the design actually happens. Um, looking at the crash history of the quarter, there are three locations that are what we call each SIP eligible. So those are your top 5% of locations in your MPO, uh, MPO here <coughs> and, and MAPC. Um, so right now they recognize Maine and Winter as being one of those locations. They don't recognize North and Park those cross uh, intersections. Uh, based on the data that we've uh, we provided in the study, they actually would be qualifying. So anything that we'd be able to approach an STOT for using the study, that the, those two intersections would actually uh, be able to get in the funding out of the HSEP program uh, with any improvements at those locations. Uh, we'd have to provide, obviously this study would go to an STOT after the fact and when it's completed, but any subsequent um, inter intersection maybe related study or something looking for a particular funding would have documents showing that those are high crash locations and that we do qualify for the funding, even though they might not recognize it as of today. Um, overall though, the intersection as a whole has a generally lower crash rate at most of the locations compared to the state uh, averages. A lot of that has to do with this just a lot of volume. The more volume you have, the smaller the crash rate is gonna be for the same amount of crashes. That doesn't mean there's a low amount of crashes, obviously the table to the right there. Uh, shows again those three particular intersections we mentioned earlier, uh, North, Winter, and Park, having a good amount per year, so seven crashes per year on average. Now that's reported crashes, so anything would probably be higher because obviously the little spender vendors under a thousand bucks might not even have a crash report that the state uh, has on its records. So those numbers could generally be higher. Um, and then even on the corridor stretches, we also this wasn't just an intersection study, we looked at the corridor. Um, generally, the corridors are the same nature. They're generally below the statewide averages, um, except for one location. This is the stretch um, between, uh, actually two stretches, sorry, uh, between Park uh, and the Walmart Plaza, and then North Street to Burroughs, which is where uh, stop, the stop truck driveway opposite Burroughs, um, are the two segments that actually have higher uh, crash rates in the state board arterial roadway. So it's just something to look at in terms of what might be happening there. Um, so there was a fatal crash in uh, but a little over two years ago. That doesn't actually affect the rate itself. Um, crash rate basically vehicles versus crashes versus years. Um, in this case, the stretches versus miles. Um, but the, uh, we did want, want to mention that you know there is a fatal uh, crash uh, outside the stop and shop boroughs, uh, pedestrian crash and, and more of that. So as we look at things along this corridor, we do want to make sure we're starting to correct some of the things that are happening in terms of the crash history. 
Uh, again, one of the big parts of this is we did do a public survey, uh, reaching out to about uh, getting 570 participants. That's, again, a very good number for a public survey of this nature, um, especially stuff that's generally programmed on the town website, for instance, not even necessarily brought out to the public itself, directly even with mailers or something. Um, but there was some consensus on a lot of things that came out of it. Um, a lot of the questions were, as were when they were generated, were geared towards thinking about the funding opportunities that might come in the future. Again, this is a mass DOT roadway and anything that we do on this roadway has to generally comply with their rules. Um, and their rules generally look at, um, especially if you're doing a corridor as a whole, you know, providing modes of transportation mm -hmm. for all users, including bikes and pets. So there were a lot of questions on there that did generally relate to bikes and pets, although that is not the general focus of the study. The general focus of the study is the every mode of transportation. Um, and then also looked at opportunities of things that might be going on in the Iraq and the surrounding. So no circuit, Reading has the road diet just south of this town. Um, and one of the questions, and a couple, maybe a couple of the questions asked directly, you know, what are your impressions of that? Um, how do you like that? And what would you think of that in this particular town? <laughs> um, obviously there was general um, com comfort with what's happening in Reading, but Reading is a different animal uh, compared to what's happening in North Reading. North Reading is a very commercial area on Route 28 all the way through, whereas Reading for that stretch just south of the um, Park Street, which are in Reading itself, is not so much. You have a lot of residential in there before you get to, down to the town center in Reading. Um, so where, where we have the general thought, which is kind of the, the graphic over to the right on this particular thing, uh, the larger the letters means it was more people brought it up in their general thoughts. The smaller means it was maybe a couple people brought it up. And obviously, there's a lot of people talking about potential pet accommodations, um, potential redevelopment opportunities. Now, that might not be directly related to the transportation parts of the corridor that we focused on in the study, um, but it does get to the aspects of how people visualize what this uh, corridor could be. Um, and then, then eventually that will affect the traffic based on you know, whatever gets redeveloped is obviously going to cause new trips and or washout trips that are already there based on the developments that are already there. Um, not all of it is generally looking at multimodal use of the roadway. I mean, we did get responses that we showed everything here. We're not, you know, hiding numbers. I mean, it shows right up in their big letters, no bike lanes. <laughs> now that doesn't mean that that's something we don't necessarily look at. It just means that we are cognizant of what the public is wants and sees this roadway as. Um, and right above it is also a conflicting statement of make bike friendly. So um, showing about almost equal height in those uh, letters, showing that there's about an equal amount of respondents that might actually think bikes are good, bikes are bad on this particular roadway. Um, and that's not to say that people don't like biking, it's just when they're looking at Route 28 itself. Um, now, when we do things with Mass UT, we like to provide bike accommodation, but it doesn't necessarily mean there needs to be bikes on every road. It just means that you want to provide point A to point B with a bike, but that might be skipping over Route 28 when you do it. It might be using other streets, for instance. And some of that would come out of maybe the future planning parts of um, the next steps. So what we did do for the town though, is we came up with a bunch of different opportunities that they could look at, things that we think would improve in different aspects. Some of it's cross-section related, some of it's not cross-section or modifying the existing or keeping the existing. Um, opportunity one, we can kind of skip over for the moment, I will in the slides, only because it's been opened actually basically keeping exactly how you are. Um, so we do have traffic, traffic operational analyses and things like that for that option, uh, but we'll skip over that for the moment because obviously it's keeping the exact roadway that it is. Um, and I'll breeze through some of these quickly, um, only because I know we don't have so much time, but some of these options are very minor in nature and how you approach mass DOT is actually the important part that comes out of each opportunity. So for this particular option, it's just general short-term maintenance, things that could be done tomorrow. Um, and a lot of it can be done tomorrow, um, whether it's, again, trimming vegetation, I won't go through each bullet, but things like as simple as trimming the vegetation. Now that's uh, something that mass DOT would do, but mass DOT is not necessarily gonna know to do it unless someone tells them or asks them to do it. Uh, and I think that's some of the things that do come out of the study, at least the low level stuff is presenting this information to Mass DOT, even if it is simply as simple as just short-term maintenance. Hey, I know you guys don't drive on this roadway every day from District 4, but just so you know, there's some couple things here that we might just want you to check in on. Can you guys help us out? And it's something that doesn't necessarily require any money from the town, doesn't require any permitting from the town. It's just, hey guys, we, we noticed this. Can you guys come up and um, help us? And Mass DOT being their roadway, knowing that someone has brought it up to them, are more likely to do it uh, right away. Um, some of those more important things when you think of traffic operations are, I guess, under the second bullet here, the sign summary or the sign inventory is always one of my particular pet peeves is there's always signage on the roadway that's damaged, wrong height, in the wrong place, cluttered up in one location, 
Um, and it's something that's very easy for even just the state to go through and just quickly change out signs if they need to, replace signs, remove signs if they need to. Uh, but again, something that they're not necessarily gonna know unless someone brings it up to them. So when we get towards the end, one of the, up, one of the things we're gonna talk about is approaching Mass UT uh, based on which opportunity and to discuss with them and what might be needed from the town in that sense on each one. Um, our second opportunity is quite similar to that one, just a little more in depth because it's more signal related, but each of the traffic signals on this corridor minus a couple locations are generally antiquated. Um, a lot of the controllers in here are 15 plus 20 years old, running on old systems. Um, and what we'd like to see is obviously we're getting into an, uh, a mode where we're gonna be starting to do a lot more um, advanced controllers. In a lot of places, Master UT is actually running specs for them right now for what they would see as anything on their particular roadways or anything they're funding. So it's a great opportunity to actually get in front of them uh, at some point and talk to them about maybe switching those out and while they're at it, obviously doing the other things at the signals. Um, but even just the simple things under that particular retrofit of these signals along this corridor are actually do have coordination um, provided at them, but a lot of them are actually turned off. So if we're wondering why we might be hitting red lights at certain locations on 28, it's not because the coordination is not actually input in the controller, it's just that it's actually not operating. It's literally turned on. Now that's again, just a simple, hey, Mass UT, we've noticed that this is um, currently just turned off and maybe it's you can't just turn it back on obviously you'd have to retime with it because things have changed probably since the last time it was ever timed in that fashion but again things to get in front of master t about about that opportunity of here's things that we see and providing the list of changes that they might be able to make and where that funding may come from but the state obviously with the infrastructure bills that have recently gone through um, master ut itself is itching to spend some of that money because if they don't use it they're going to lose it so providing um, the information in front of them about, especially something that's on their infrastructure, let alone uh, town's infrastructure, gives them a better chance, gives the town a better chance to get some of that funding, whether it's, you know, right now the state's going through a bottleneck grant, uh, for instance, um, uh, 11 towns were picked uh, for this particular round, um, and they're gonna be going in and just fixing some of the things on in, like individual bottleneck locations. I think Reading is actually get, is getting uh, one of those 11 this particular year. Uh, they're doing Main Street from Salem Street down to Washington uh, for the, where that merge and diverge is for that one block. Um, but it's a good opportunity to start reaching out because those grants are going to come available for even next year too. And to even get into the queue now about uh, where we'd like to go in, in the sense of, uh, I mean, for lack of a better word, it's their infrastructure. They don't want to fix that first if they have that opportunity. Um, but even just simple things like switching up some of the poles and stuff out there. I mean, a lot of things are rusted over. Rust is not a signal's best friend. Um, water basically gets in past rust and water and electronics obviously are a bad thing combination. Um, but that's generally what we look at in terms of our, uh, sorry, nobody, and we've developed concepts for at least three of the opportunities, ones that really change the operational nature of the quarter, um, just so that um, the town would have a base point of estimating uh, what the cost of these would be construction wise. Uh, because again, the more information you give Master UT, the more likely they are um, to start moving towards that particular improvement. So we do have a concept plan put together for what the ret uh, retrofit in each signal uh, would look like and what it would entail, um, um, which will allow Master UT, even if they were just, this is, would be in this sense, good enough for them to actually go out on some of their grants to even fix, um, not, not even a black and white plan. Um, I do have copies of each of these concepts back here uh, for future the town needs them or just the general public comes up after. But, um, moving into the cross-sectional nature of the, changing out the cross-sectional parts of the corridor. I mean, full traffic signal reconstruction. I mean, these signals, I, I mentioned again, were, are pretty antiquated. They could use a full overhaul um, and providing the new up-to-date equipment uh, that it would allow better on-demand service for vehicles. So obviously anything that goes out there now you can do a lot of things uh, for these signals in terms of if there's cars, green light, if there's no cars, don't get it off, get the green line off of it. Uh, different detection systems outside of the loops. I know if the DPW is here, I'm pretty sure they would give you a good idea of how they feel about loops um, in the roadway, which um, don't often fault every every once in a while. And I believe there are a lot of faulting ones out there right now. Again, something that Mass UT, once they get aware of it, they were aware of a faulting detection system, they would actually probably go out there within the next week and fix it. That's just a matter of us going out um, to tell them to do so because they, they are operating hundreds of signals in this particular district. Uh, they need to be made aware of something's uh, wrong. 
Um, they only drive through each roadway every so often. Um, we did look at, and this is just a sense of, as we go towards state related fundings, everything is gonna have to go through an ICE analysis, so that's intersection uh, control evaluation. One of the options in order to get state funding is to look at what a roundabout could do at a location, whether or not you put it in or not. Uh, but it's just something that we and the planning study did look at already, at least in the plant, that 10,000 foot view about what could possibly go in. And there are locations on the corner where a roundabout would fit, but with right, right away impacts. And obviously being a commercial corridor, right away impacts doesn't necessarily mean going off the line. It means things like parking lots and potential buildings. I don't think buildings were necessarily conflicting in the intersections we said it could happen, but there are definitely parking lots, driveways, things like that that would have to get altered. And obviously that becomes conversation with the property owner, stakeholder, and other stakeholders. But it's at least something that you have in your in your pocket now um, to go to the state, at least when we get into the any tip process that might happen for state federal funding, um, that this has already been partially done. And then we have some of the impact information already in hand uh, for it. Uh, there is a three stages to that ICE evaluation. A lot of the information that's already provided in this planning study will get you through stage one. And stage one could be the end of that process if you give if the reason is basically that you're impacting, you know, historical, environmental, um, and just general property impacts where you're basically defunct, uh, making a site defunct from any future use, which would be interesting. If you're a retail plaza, if you're getting rid of a bunch of their 50% of the parking spaces, that's, that's an unreasonable ask, for instance. Um, for someone to be able to do. Um, we did a, a look at a content. This is a concept that's also printed out, uh, pedestrian connectivity. Um, again, we have intermittent sidewalks on different parts of Main Street going up uh, throughout the entire town. And there is just an opportunity in different grant processes that you can go through just to fix this, if, that was the, if that's one of the key things that the town wants to do. So the state does have uh, a state and federal funding project already open um, under this contract here, there was one last year, there will probably one next year as well, that they just go through and pick locations just like this, just to fill in the sidewalks so they're not there. Um, and there might be other improvements, like minor improvements that go with it. Um, I know TEC personally actually is working on a couple of these particular projects. Um, I think the nearest one to here is probably actually Andover, um, up by the, um, actually no, it's Methuen, my, my badge. It's on the other side of the river from Andover and that where the, uh, the old rotary used to be. But just looking at opportunities to connect sidewalks and that gets you potentially money right up front. Again, providing that petition or information to Mass UT to get that into a project that already has a tip number. So it's not, it could be a next year thing as opposed to a five years away thing like a normal state or, funding, uh, state or federal funding project. Again, the concepts that we provided does look at where these would be and what other impacts might happen. Obviously there'd be you know, some driveway cur uh, curb cut reconstructions, opportunities to tee up more some of the roadway. So if this particular picture shows, you know, that curb radii on low road closing up a little bit. So maybe slower some of the speeds as they take that right turn, uh, right on red, uh, mostly. And then some things can be just as simple. Let's uh, move away from Mass DOT for a moment. And the things that the town could do just on their particular level is um, access management. And this could be just a town wide thing as opposed to just Main Street. But looking at what we do in terms of um, Actually, we're sitting in front of one of the boards who make some of these decisions about uh, how curb cuts gets laid out. Um, now, a lot of these particular sites on Route 28 have been there for a very long time. They're grandfathered into certain rules, uh, but it's an opportunity to maybe look at what we're doing uh, as new sites do come available on uh, 28 through you know redevelopment, or if they come in front of the board for other reasons. But um, I think the last uh, bullet on here might be the most important one is just looking at how the bylaws uh, may be written. And that's not to say that something is in the, not in the, there right now that's um, um, written in a, in a way to make the access uh, better coming on, in and on, out of Main Street, but um, providing that uh, buffer between um, anybody who has to go in front of the state for a permit in order to put their driveway on Route 28, at least gets them through initially for driveways in a certain space, um, certain spaces, looking at what they could do to maybe combine driveways with their neighbors. Now, obviously that requires other things like cross access easements and things like that, but uh, putting people in at least a position to talk about that uh, because we do have a lot of driveways on 28 and that does cause um, other conflicting factors in terms of the traffic operations uh, for people traveling along the roadway. Um, we did obviously look at what would happen if we did continue this road diet that Reading had done through um, North Reading and we'll get there's some traffic operational slides after this, but 
uh, we wanted to make sure that we just so you know dotting all the i's crossing all the t's what this would look like um and generally keeping that same cross section because again as as we go through anything with master t they are going to want to see things uh for a full corridor length project that would involve bikes and peds i mean we do have the ped already generally with the sidewalks but um, there are no bike facilities out there now so it is just at least something to think about uh regardless about what would happen um and then obviously there's the pluses and minus with that obviously in this sense we are getting one lane in, in each direction going away if you were to do something like this so obviously that's going to affect the operations in a certain way um, um, in some cases more than others and again we have a concept for this one what it would look like and this is a border to border concept that shows um, every inch of main street going through the town and what would probably have to look like and that doesn't mean that center turn lane would continue all through each intersection like Reading does for most of it. Like obviously here at Winter and Bull Street, you'd have to have dedicated left turn lanes. There's a lot of left turns at those intersections. And we wouldn't necessarily um, recommend the town, but um, have that two-way left turn filtered through each of the signals either. Um, we would make sure that we have dedicated left turn lanes for everybody that, um, at those key locations. So there was an operational analysis. We looked at four different scenarios. Um, I guess the four ones that actually change control operations. Um, so obviously the existing conditions, the base year. And then we have a couple future different versions of what would happen in the future. No bill, which is keeping the quarter as it is, um, but um, it's just 10 years uh, beyond uh, what today is in terms of traffic volumes. That same amount of volume, but looking at what happens if we just optimize the signals and any new signal reconstruction would basically follow this particular pattern as well. And then looking what happened if we did the road diet. Um, so um, there are some locations that are operating generally fine now and there might be congestion in it now, but it might not be related to that particular location. It might be spurring from the next one downstream. Uh, but obviously some things aren't necessarily completely out of the question of what we already know. We know Park Street's not operating at the best uh, that it can. And that, that doesn't necessarily change with certain signal operation. That's just because the volume on park and main together is a lot. And so that kind of location would require something like more of a geometric change, um, potentially more lanes and how you're going to change that or find another way for people at that intersection to not be at that intersection. Um, that also involves obviously all the roadways. Um, so the analysis we need to do is for um, generally the, what we call the three peak hours, the AM peak hour. Um, the PM, which is the next slide, and then the Saturday lunch um, time period, um, which is where you're going to see the most volume on the roadway. So basically, if you can get these particular three time periods to generally work, you're probably going to get the rest of the quarter. Obviously, you've, we show that volume capture at the beginning, the distribution table of it's really the AM and, P are those, AM and PM are those peak volumes in the middle of the day really dips down from there. Um, and then, you know, that full disclosure, looking at that road diet in particular, there are locations that are going to operate um, much elevated or um, degraded from the other conditions um, based on putting that road diet. And a lot of that's just the nature of, obviously there's two lanes in one direction now, there's gonna be, that choice would have one lane in each direction then. So um, doesn't necessarily mean that that doesn't create a safer condition in terms of traffic safety. It just means that um, the operations itself would be at an elevated level of service and that there's a certain trade-off that needs to be made and thought about as we move forward through this, um, any future part of this uh, process to decide what, what, what is the trade-off cost versus um, benefit for if we wanted to do that route or looking at some other quarter um, uh, cross-sectional analysis, like we doing the signals or we doing just by keeping the four lanes in each direction, for instance, or sorry, the two lanes in each direction. So uh, I'll go through this one a little fast, but it's um, just kind of summarizing what we've already talked about. You know, th there's not a major crash history along this quarter, although there are locations that are in the top 5% um, in what we call equivalent property damage, damage only. That doesn't mean there's a lot of crashes. It just means some of the crashes might be more severe than what we see in other locations. But that number is really, that 5% number is based off of severity of crash, not necessarily amount. So if you have, uh, for instance, uh, the best way to describe it is an injury or fatal crash is weighted as 21 points versus a normal property damage crash is one point. So you basically need 21 crashes to just make up one injury crash. And that's just to say that what kind of money is involved or what kind of, I guess, not dollar value, but um, the value that we put on a crash happening. Obviously, there's a lot of things that have to happen when you have a crash. There's emergency response. 
there's corrective measures that have to go in place, there's obviously insurance payouts, just things like that. So all those get weighted into uh, obviously what we see as being that uh, cost versus a uh, particular crash. So those three locations I mentioned are in that top 5%, but that allows you to also approach different funding sources uh, with the high crash location. and brings, brings you towards the top of the list of something that state really wants to look at in terms of fixing um, when you are on that list. Um, obviously we have capacity needs already uh, at the over 62 crosses over Main Street. Uh, and that really is gonna be the control point for a lot of the overall quarter improvements throughout the town, no matter what the choice is, uh, because that is a much higher volume compared to the rest of the quarter. Um, there is an opportunity to provide more bike and uh, pet op um, accommodations along the quarter. Obviously the pedestrian part is much easier only because the sidewalk is already there in most of the places. How that gets reconstructed if needed um, in order to provide full compliance with you know, ADA and other aspects. Um, can be also can be talked with Master UT almost in a low level sense, uh, whereas the bike improvements, if that were to go in, is more of that long term um, working with Mass Doc or particular funding sources. Um, but I think one of the uh, the main things coming out is, is actually the next bullet is this is the first step in the process, and one of the things the town would want to do, regardless of what happens, is to reach out to the community more. Mm -hmm. um, there would be uh, a thought that there would be public presentations. Um, whether it's charrettes or even getting um, other coordination with the other parts of the town as well, because as much as you want to also get the business involved, but um, you know, there's other aspects of the quarter that are just not transportation that would be affected if you did anything transportation related. And that might be as simple as you know, knowing the concom is going to be there when we touch things like the areas of the the, uh, the waterway wetland area right outside like Ocean State Job Lot, for instance, um, <clears throat> things like that. So. Um, we'll be more about that on the next uh, slide, which is the last one, don't worry. But, um, but again, the key aspect of this is Master G does own the quarter. Anything does have to go through them. And it's just a matter of what the town and, and how the town wants to approach Master G for each particular opportunity that you want to look into. And again, some of it is funding's already available for some of the things you may want to do. Um, or just the, the sidewalk connectivity is the best example I have uh, right off the bat from my head. Uh, where they already have that tip program in, pay, uh, in place the funding's already there all you have, all the town needs to do is make sure they get on that list somehow and that might be as easy as getting in front of district four who's the master UT district in this area um, about hey we know you have this we have this need it's your right away so it's only going to help you out as well let's get this done let's find a way to do it um, as then we get to the larger alternatives maybe there's something that the town is giving um, um, in order to help, and even though it's a Master Two Railway, in order to get it to the front of the line, maybe it's something where the town is uh, providing something like, again, a more in-depth planning studies of a particular location, going towards anything that might be the first step of a design or concepts, uh, more in-depth concepts, in order to get Master T, knowing that someone else has skin in the game, so it moves again to the front of their line. Um, but again, that, that again that next steps for I guess the town. Um, and where we'll continue after this particular study is, again, review what we, the options that are provided in the study and the detailed information that comes out of that, whether it's the operational analysis we have for each alternative, looking at the concepts and what that might mean for any type of improvement. Um, and then get working together with other town departments. I mentioned the Concom earlier, but, you know, make sure your select board is on uh, board, board with us. Make sure your residents generally have a thought and say in the matter about particular locations that may they see as troubling. Obviously, we did the public survey, but on a individual location basis, there might be something that if there's certain funding available or only X dollars available, maybe that the state has to do certain improvements. Um, maybe you, maybe the town gets together and have um, the residents in the town overall on board to fix, say, Park Street first. Because um, maybe that's where the funding is available. Uh, because as a quarter wide, we're talking about, you know, a lot of money that comes out of the tip of one particular year. Maybe you want to break it in two. Maybe that's how you want to approach Mass Dot. Maybe you want to look at signals first and then quarter second um, in order to make sure that one project drops off the tip one year because they didn't finish their design. There's $3 million open. They need to spend that money. So they're going to try to find whoever is able to slip in fast under that tip year with a design maybe already in place or at least concepts already in place where the design process is much quicker. Um, so, um, but I guess the, the initial first step that went come out of this is also once the, um, the quarter study is finalized out of its draft 
is to get it in front of Master UT District 4. So it is their roadway. You want to make them aware that we've already looked into this and started the process uh, for them. Um, and then individual uh, petitioning from there, again, what you may want to look at first or what you think the town thinks is the uh, most pressing matter, <clears throat> if not the quarter. <clears throat> um, but again, making that the public and the stakeholder, the businesses, there's a lot of businesses there. A lot of them, regardless of what happens, may have their driveways affected. And I'm not talking about, you know, like you're obviously closing driveways maybe, but even if you're just repaving their driveway opening or changing their curb line and how it's operated, that's, you know, it might not be their particular land, but you also, it, but it is their access point. So you want to make sure that everybody is on board. And that might not mean, uh, oh, basically one of the things that come out of that is there's going to be easements involved with anything that we do, whether they're temporary construction easements, that's, you know, someone needs to stack, you know, a pile of granite for a couple of weeks, or it's, you know, particular land that you may need. And I don't know, master, and I'll bring up the example here only because there's signals on this particular quarter is all new signal equipment if put in would need to be on mass DOTs right away. So if they need to expand their right away at any point, you know, that's something that's also going to have to become a factor because that process is longer than normal design. Um, and then obviously, what's the biggest choice in that coordination with Master UT happened and how the town wants to do that is working with Master UT to help with their um, initial coordination of the project and the initiation of that project. Um, so the town, you want to be involved as you want to help lead, you know, it's their roadway. You want to help lead the path that they need to follow to satisfy your residents, uh, not just their needs. Obviously, it might be the roadway, but they're not the ones driving it every day. It's, it's the town is. So they might have the final say on certain aspects, but you want to lead them in a direction um, that you have. Um, so yeah, again, we have the, the draft study is in the town's hands. I have to have a copy here if anybody wants one to look at. Uh, but generally that overview is at least what we've done so far in terms of the plan, quarter plan <coughs> study. Um, looking for other comments and feedback that come from the, the planning department um, in order to wrap up that, in order to get, again, as fast as possible we can, get something in Mass UT's hands and in front of them. But at this time, yeah, just to keep it much shorter, but any questions or comments initially from the board that they want to board discuss with? Or a comment? Um, no, um, there's a lot of stuff, there's a lot of possibilities. <coughs> and, uh, I mean, uh, the percentage of people who didn't really uh, care for the Reading thing was uh, a little surprising. I thought more people would be on board for that three lane. Yeah. yeah. Two way and it with the term thing thing because it seems I to work pretty really good well. out there. Yeah, so. and I'll actually preface that by saying that a lot of the responses didn't have a problem with actually the reading. Yeah. It's, it's knowing like, what yeah. reading is on that stretch versus what Main Street is when you enter North Reading, uh, yeah. North Reading because North Reading is it's yeah. commercial almost all the way up to boroughs, and that's when it becomes a little more we'll call it residential in nature. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so the in and out of the driveways mm -hmm. and all that, I think people have maybe have in their head and rightly so. People start coming in and out of driveways, and you're thinking about how you used to drive down that road or how you are, whether it's switching lanes to bypass or things like that. And obviously, with the road diet, that opportunity goes away. But well, well, so, they, most, they most likely don't see a, a problem with it being four lanes because there's always, you can just pull into the right lane, and everybody can go by you, and then you can turn into wherever you're turning, except if you're going to try to make a left turn out of, for example, on a northbound, on the northbound <coughs> side. Yeah, that's a whole lot more difficult because now you block the lane, the passing lane, and uh, that's where the rub comes. That's where uh, a, th a three-lane situation would work good because everybody's going to stay in the travel lane, and you can make your turns either way from the from the center lane. Yeah. So I mean, I, I I I mean I've driven through Reading many times, and I think that's I think it works pretty good up there. So uh, that's why they like it. But they they would probably like it here if we had it. <laughs> Yeah, and Reading did decide to keep it because originally the Reading one was a pilot program. Yeah. So it wasn't meant to stay if it didn't work. So right. if it didn't work, they were going to rip it out. Right. Yeah, um, yeah. So, and it's still there. So, yeah. Yeah. so it must work. Um, I mean, there are challenging locations in North Reading. I mean, even just the first location that you'd hit, Park Street, yeah. is a trouble location. Again, though, it's a trouble location with or without the road diet, though. Yeah. That was the option. So other trade offs that need to be discussed uh, going forward. Um, the study in no way recommends that that's the option. It's just saying that yeah. we're providing with the information for how the town wants to approach it and to do their discussions. So if you want to give them the information, here's what it would look like um, under the current uh, volume situation. And that's not to say that if you did provide that, <coughs> a lot of the cut through volume might go away. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and that can be with any alternative that you do. Obviously, if you make the signal optimization, then the coordination is a lot better. Could add more cars. <laughs> so right, right. there's also trade-offs in each way. I mean, 93 is only a mile and a half off this roadway, and mm-hmm. it's not the, I mean, right here, it's kind of not the best location because the lane drop is happens to be yeah. <laughs> equivalent but to where North Reading is. But even if we limited, even if it initially limited our request to the DMS DOT for things like replacement or repair of rusted poles and all those kind of things, but I think one of the key things is also is the timing of the lights. I mean, that's that's a thing that I think makes a big difference in how traffic flows, the timing. And, and I know you said that they haven't really adjusted that in a long time. It's kind of old school right now. Well, I mean, I, they don't have a log in those particular control boxes, whether the time they, I mean, they might, but I, maybe they're just written to look at, they keep their own logs. Yeah. They're supposed to keep a log in the cabinet every time someone right. changes something. Um, these ones did not have that log, uh, <laughs> but, uh, which is not uncommon. It's not uncommon. I'd say about only 35%, 40% of the controls actually even have that log in there. Yeah. But, um, well, I mean, I think it would be, you know, if, if you, uh, I mean, if we petition them to take a look at that, um, I, I don't know whether it would, uh, um, what, what I'm primarily thinking about is the, is the uh, crash statistics on those two on the two main ones that have the high crash statistics, or three actually, if if a um, properly timed light sequence would have uh, eliminated the interaction. Yeah, and it could be even as simple as even if the let's say the green time doesn't change, but even just making sure like the yellow and red are timed correctly. Yellow and red are actual calculated values. Yeah, um, yeah. they're not. The delay green times. can be manipulated based on volume and stuff like that, but. Yellow that's, that's, is meant to be a certain value based on the grade and the speed. Yeah. Red is the size of the intersection and the speed. Yeah, that's your intersection so, clearing time, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or even the ped, the ped timing but, going across where. Yeah. In an operational sense, uh, yeah. whenever you change the ped timing on this quarter, it's uh, it's going to get longer. But because yeah. <laughs> I mean, all anything you bring the to the SAP is going to take a while to get through, no matter what. So. Yeah. Yeah. And the more information you provide, like this is a, yeah. the fact that this study is already done. Yeah. You've already given Mass UT information to where this, again, starts moving up to the top of the list of things that they can get to. Right, right. Um, so we might not have a signal timing plan for what they want to go to, although we provide an estimate of where we would like them to be. Uh, we do actually calculate all the yellows and reds, yeah. what they're supposed to be at each intersection. So we could get those directly yeah. to them and say, hey guys, next time you're out here, you have probably someone driving out here every day, even though they're just driving through. You can have one of their technicians, you can yeah. just change that, and that's a quick thing that could happen tomorrow kind of thing. But Master T, again, doesn't know until they know. Right. So. David, you got anything? I got a couple questions. Um, I just want to confirm. So, is we, we have generally a consistent fifty foot curb to curb. So, does that kind of match the DOT section that you showed the twelve, the four twelves, four twelves, and one one foot shoulders? Shoulder. Um, so there are some points where it might bulge out a little bit like that, but nothing that would be a really on a two mile stretch of corridor, which we. So, have. what's the right of way? Is that also consistent the whole way? It's sixty six feet, except there's a small area. I think it's by Ocean State Job Lot, which we'll make, we mentioned in the study exactly where it is. And that's where it pinches? Uh, that it actually grows, it really grows. grows a little bit. It's never less than 66. Okay. So this is one of those roadways that was there that the, uh, yeah. the state highway layout for this road is from like, you know, early 1900s, which yeah, made they, the same that, throughout the corridor. When they redid that section of the road, they did it once and then it was sinking and they dug it all back out yeah, again and expanded the, the right of way there the because they had to dig it all out and fill it all yeah. back in because it was peat underneath there. So. Uh, the other the other question is what you know what portion you mentioned grants for signaling sensors all that stuff uh, controls is what portion is just upkeep that mass DOT should have on a regular basis and what por- portion is us actually going and trying to get a grant for them to do what they should be doing I'm yeah, just, I mean, I'm just confused with why we need to get a grant for them oh sure um, this, I mean the smaller things like that I mentioned like the first couple of opportunities like the maintenance the general maintenance one or even the the signal retrofit is the probably the best example are things that are generally would be bad should be master's responsibility almost with no town input right um, what we do, what we can do as a town though is get in front of them and tell them that this is this, this, this is an this issue is the spec also and this is what we the town recommend. itself has already provided you know, a funding source towards that, yeah. you gave them the study. Yeah. That they now know that this is actually there. Now, should they know that already? You know, it is their roadway, but I mean, they're also <laughs> running a large amount of miles of roadway. And, <laughs> so, yeah. and there's, you know, 351 communities that they're trying to get to uh, based on our request. So, and I then mean, the other question is, so I think from your presentation, 
is mass DOT and just signaling in general moving away from the sensors, the ground-based sensors, and going more to a, a video uh, inflow? Yes and no, it really idea. depends on where you are. So District 3, which is the central mass, the Worcester area, is still running on loops. They like loops. They don't like the new stuff. And yeah. a lot of the, some of the times that's just um, this not me knowing that person in particular, but I'm just saying like some districts will just say, you know, we haven't vetted all this stuff um, fully. We don't necessarily, we know a lot of the towns don't like it because we put it in and um, our electricians may not know how to use it. And a lot of some of that's still controlled because, you know, people have been there for four years, whatever, things haven't changed over yet. Uh, whereas district four likes video detection, the cameras. Um, so, but that define be, camera though, because people get nervous. Oh, sure, yeah, that. no, no, okay. Is that That's more just point. LIDAR I explained, infrared? I, I have to explain this a lot. So there's different things that we have, microwave, radio, or video for that type of detection. Um, you basically see it almost like a camera on the mast arm, the signal mast arm overhead. When you look through it, it's sensing cars, it's sensing the direction the cars are going, and that's what's tripping the green light or not. Um, not exactly the thing that you can look through and get license plates or anything like that. I, yeah. mean, <laughs> I mean, it's usually at minimum, at minimum it's 40 feet away because that's usually the minimum the master has to be um, from the stop line. And even then, I mean, some of the things are 90 feet away from where people are turning. It sees that you are in a red car. Like maybe you can figure out what type of car it is if you're staring at it all day, but you're not getting license plates. It's not that, I mean, it's not grainy, but it's not, it's not something that you're visually looking into. And nor, unless you are physically, I mean, watching it, a lot of these things don't even, they don't record. I mean, right. you can get a program to have that do that, but most of the time that's for like an operation center, like a master D as an operation center. Um, or you might be able to count, you can buy a module to have it count cars all the time, which is actually a good idea. Uh, where we'll physically do a craft account nonstop. And if right. you can pull up a count you did back in July, tomorrow, if you wanted to. And, um, you can base all your traffic volume adjustment factors. You can have a town-based system that does it. So when we do signals, we, we always recommend the towns to go through that. But you know, you also have to have the infrastructure to be able to handle that too. You know, uh, where there's a personnel to be able to be able to look at that kind of stuff and stuff like that. So it's really up to the town what they want to do. But um, the reason why those are generally what we consider better than what's in the ground is what's in the ground. You know, road road cracks it cracks the copper wire with it, or you know, then it only takes one drop of water to hit that wire kind of thing to short it out or something like that. Or yeah. It just becomes, it's a very, very low capital cost, but it's a very, very high maintenance cost comparatively because you're constantly out there. Whereas video detection camera or, or microwave or something like that, it's a high capital cost, but you maybe only have to go there once a year just to check to make sure it's facing the right direction again because you know over 365 days, it might move just a tiny bit because of wind over time. But once a year, guide a bucket truck just making sure it's facing the right direction. Um, and then I'll make one, one comment. I think one of the most dangerous intersections, which is up on, it proves out here, is I think um, in the turning lane, so heading towards on 28 at Park, the last intersection in your study, set number seven, I guess would be, um, facing Reading, there's a turning lane to go onto Park, but there's no turning signal. And so what happens is the other side, uh, the opposite side, they have a turning lane they're sitting there waiting to turn. They're blocking the oncoming traffic. That is probably, I don't know if you sensed or put out any rec recording for that intersection back from that. That's the fastest speed on 28 is coming down that hill. Oh, yeah. And they come and down that hill, side. I get a green light, I'm going in my right lane and I'm just flying. And if you turn, and I've witnessed two accidents, two T-bones that were pretty, pretty major from a person turning left on Park Street, there's no turning signal, there's nothing. So it's just, you get, and you get hit hard, you know, cause it's a blind, it's a blind intersection or a blind turn for that, that yeah. car that thinks, oh, I'm clear. And then they go out. I mean, they jump out of the they turn. lane into the, yeah. to the right so, lane and then they go. And I just, that's a turn I have to do all the time. So I'm a pro at yeah. the intersection, but. And that definitely could be a recommendation. It's, it's not a yeah. direct recommendation that we have in our study. Yeah. Um, I just could be, it'd be you more about. You maybe look at it because it, it is probably out of all the ones I've seen, I've witnessed two probably of those seven that are that's recorded. That's what you have in the, your three yeah. lane. Well, could be, it could be, lane. but it's that just also, work, yeah. it's just also a signal. Yeah, you know, Mr. Chairman, it's just so there could just be that. Yeah, without well, being there 20 years ago when it was originally designed, I have a pretty good idea why there is no uh, protected left, and that's because there's probably not a lot of volume turning left without having the, I have the number somewhere, but without having right yeah, in front of me. Well, yeah. no, it's it because it's more into the, <clears> yeah. that's possible too. Because in order to get the other end of park is eventually going to get back towards uh, Winter Street, right? So right. people, if they're unless they're coming from like Walmart, 
um, or any of the individual businesses right that are south of winter. This, you can't do a property turning there's left on winter. Bunch, there's a whole bunch of businesses that they <laughs> Yeah, I think there's been a lot of added here for the east side of town. So. Yeah. But, you know, the 20 years ago, uh, things were different yeah, so whenever it was happen. originally designed. And my guess is that's why it is the way it is right now. But that, right. again, you can change yeah. yep. however, whatever. <laughs> so, yeah, right. that's interesting. So, all right. That's it. Thank you. Good. Good. Thank you, Sam. Thanks. Oh, um, no, just, I mean, I thought maybe we should follow up. I, I would love to follow up again with us, especially when we have an engineer on board. Um, yeah, we don't I have one yet. I would love to hear a little bit more about the kinds of grant programs that um, yeah. our staff may have available that we might recommend that we should approach some of that. Yeah, that'd be um, sure. There's, there's a lot of good. Um, everybody always thinks of the TIP program when they want to do something and using the, you know, the full state and federal funding. There's plenty of other things to go after. Um, and again, and that's what we need to know. Yeah, it's all so, those little ones that actually. Yeah, it's, again, mm -hmm. grab it. they're all still going to be programmed through Mass DOT usually. Usually, some of them, MPO might have a couple, but um, even then, they're just going to forward everything off towards Mass DOT. But again, being a Mass DOT roadway, this is where they're going to want to spend the money too. They always love spending money on their roadways too. So, it's uh, right in here. They all hear me. Before. You know, on the. Online? Yeah. Well, what's that? This is going to drop off. We actually need him. I can No, we're not. We, we don't have a quorum for the special permit. We need four. And he's the four. We are waiting for, uh, we're waiting for Ryan. Um, let me just see. He's actually on spell check. <laughs> I'm sorry? Is he on? Yeah, he's on. Okay. Yeah, Unless that's he's got a number. Let's set the mobile light out. Yeah, he was on for twenty minutes. He said. I'll try to get her on, right? Or is it just people <laughs> in this room or something? Or, you know, no. It doesn't make any sense. If you're on, you're on. <clears throat> we have to come in the waiting room. So I didn't see that there were some people oh, okay. waiting to go out. Because it didn't show on the screen. Because I didn't have the interview. You weren't on that one. Because that's yeah. the only place I could see. No problem. Anyway. So Bruce, we got an issue right now. As you know, it's a special permit. We need four. Yes. We're trying to get Ryan back online because we posted this as a as a, a hybrid Sorry, meeting. Yeah. Um, and if we can get him back online, then we're good to go. Okay. Otherwise, we'll, we'll wait and see what you know, happens. And I apologize. I apologize for the yeah. If it this difficulty. Work, it's it's, it's, it's <clears> no problem. We'll just we'll just reschedule, but we'll wait and see if it's okay. Possible. Yeah, we're going to see. I, I, I te he was texting with us and I was texting him back saying we needed him for this, for the special permit. So then he went down to kitties for some dinner. <laughs> 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 well, Bruce is a 
pro at this, so he knows how this works. No, story. Bruce understands. So, <laughs> well, that's why I was, I was telling him, let him know. Because he understands this stuff. Yes, he does. <sighs> What's the new one he's So he's not on right now, but he was. We won't get it. So what else we got then? We got the um the every two keys. I have a draft um actually. I looked at <laughs> most of it. Um I just put it in today, so it, it looks pretty straightforward. I don't know if you needed our input on that. Um, I mean, if you have input, I only put it in today, so I understand if you haven't had a chance to look at it. It's basically just what we talked about, which is changing the special permit um, requirement for the site plan review. Right. Yep. Um, and that's just just to show you what, what the state requires as far mm -hmm. as us putting in um, the action plan. Mm. What I understand about it, that you know, what you did there pretty much meets the requirements of the of the update that we have to do. So it, it should meet it. As far as I understand, it meets it. We won't know yeah. for sure until they review it and until we go through the compliance tool. They, they have said they're if they, releasing the compliance yeah, tool. Yeah, if, it, so. if they, re, I mean, it looks. Uh, you know, I read through it real quick. It looks okay to me. But my question would be, if they, if they, if they decide that it's deficient in some way. Are they going to let you know and let you cure that deficiency, or? Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I mean, I so. so then, um, so so you know, it does. It's not really. It's not critical. We, no, it's not. It's not. And I, I think she's done a great job getting this to where she is, a, where it is right now. Because reading through the rules, it's pretty. It's a little vague. He said he'd get on. So it will. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll try. He says I'll try again. So. Yeah. Let's try. Mm -hmm. Everybody ready? Right. Okay, now. Right. So Danielle, did you need a vote from us on that, or are you just going to send it in? I thought it was, it was before I actually submitted it, I wanted to share it with um, the TA in case he wants to run it okay. by himself. Right. Just because it's on behalf of the town. Yeah, yeah, you get so, to share it with them. Let yeah, like I just want to make sure they're comfortable with that approach first. It's not due until the end of January, but if they're comfortable with it and we're comfortable with it, then I, we can submit it. It's certainly not set in stone, and not, right. nothing is until town meeting. So. Um, well, I guess if anybody else had any, uh, any changes they wanted to make, you'd be able to make those and bring it back to us and we can review those changes so yeah yeah so do it sooner than later is the host just muted everything we cannot hear oh. hmm. Hmm. we can hear you just fine yeah she can't hear us oh. if it has begun i cannot hear anything it has Daniel McKnight who is mute. And so is room 14. Daniel, go, mute. Go, go and unmute your, your computer. Which one? This you. one has to be muted. Oh, that one has to be muted, right? Yeah. All right, the room 14 cam. Unmute that. Um, this one does not need sound. So if this is started, we can't hear it. We understand. Yeah. We are. Mm -hmm. No, no, that one. Okay, now I think you've unmuted, but not Daniel McKnight. No, you muted yourself again. We know, ma'am. We know. We know. This has to be muted. This has to be muted. You, you. Was that one of the. Um, 
Room 14. The host would like to hear a microphone. You can press star 6 to unmute. That's not muted, is it? That one has to be Something happened when I hit you yeah, all. Star six. Star this six. This has to be muted, but star six. You are unmuted. So say so. Can you hear us? You can't hear us. Um. I still cannot. <sighs> I don't know what. I cannot hear anything. I can't hear the Daniel McKnight is muted. Is it possibly the bottom left there? You have a button that says unmute. If you click that, would it do anything? Well, I, I can see I'm, room 14 can, but that's muted too. Can you hear us? Now I can, yeah. It was this button. Yeah. Can hear you. Okay. Okay. We actually hadn't started the public hearing yet. So we were talking about um, the MBTA what was that? Communication action plan. So we hadn't started because we don't have a quorum. Quorum of four for a special permit. We're hoping to get one more member oh, on. Nine. And he just got here. Right. Ryan, you there? Well, it's very hard to hear you. Ma'am, you got to raise your hand so that we can see that you want to speak. Don't yeah. just speak because it's in the I, middle of a meeting now. I can't hear you. We do have to speak, I think, pretty loudly to be heard in that phone. I think. Yeah, please. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, it's the camera center right there. Is that one on? So, you're going to be talking into the camera here. Those are for uh, broadcast. Those are for you guys. Yeah, that's so that's there, just right? trying to that Mike's trying to pick us all up. So Mike is trying to pick everyone up. So if you're going to be talking to someone via Zoom, you're going to have to direct uh, unfortunately over here. So just do your best projections. <laughs> you usually don't have a problem with that. Yeah. yeah. So use your best actor voice. I get loud voice. So is Ryan there? Yep. Ryan's here. All right. So I am here. Hey Ryan. Hi Ryan, can you hear us? I can hear you. Okay. Yes. All right. Do you have a uh, Yeah. Hey, would you read that when it comes up, please? Unless it's mm -hmm. just Danielle has it. It's not very clear. It's not very clear. We haven't we have not started yet, ma'am. Thank you. <clears throat> I don't see the public hearing notice in here. Do you? Well, Danielle's it was in the oh. file, and I just had to think about it. It's not, it's not okay. in the. Uh, Do you have it? Do you have it in there? No, I don't have it in the in my iPad. Yes. Danielle's good. <clears throat> okay, who wants it? I'll give the to us. Please. Just read the whole thing here. Let's see. Right from the top? Yeah, just. I'll have to do that part yeah. since we're Zoom. Yep. <clears throat> okay. Notice is hereby given loud, that loud. I'm fine. <laughs> Notice is hereby given that the North Reading Community Planning Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, October 18, 2022, in room 14 of the North Reading Town Hall and online 8 p.m. on the application of JB McLean House Realty Trust for a site plan review and senior house overlay district special permit for the property located at 146, 148, 150 Park Street, <coughs> North Reading, Mass 01864, map 54, parcels 123, 124, and 125. You may participate in this hearing online by phone, and uh, the online is the uh, Zoom. It gives a, an HTTP address here. So, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right. If I may, you may start. Thank you, sir. My name is Brad Latham. I'm here on behalf of the applicant, 
uh, applicant is uh, Bruce Wheeler, is trustee of the J.B. McLean House Realty Trust. I'd like to introduce the members who will be presenting tonight in the sequence in which they'll present. Peter Ogren, professional engineer of Hayes Engineering. Joe Grillo, also an engineer from Hayes Engineering. Larry Reeves, who is a, a AIA architect, will be presenting the architectural portion. Uh, and we have also uh, Tom Miner, who is a landscape architect, who will be closing the presentation uh, and discussing landscaping features and one off-site feature. Uh, the parcel involved is shown on the screen. It's a 4.25 acre more or less parcel. Uh, the entire southerly portion shown in dark green in this plan is not being touched. It's being left in its natural condition. It's the northerly upland section that's involved in the application. Uh, as has been identified, this is 146, 148, and 150 Park Street. The topography is that the site drops uh, from north to south, that is from Park Street heading southerly, it goes down in elevation, which is one of the design features uh, of the project that lessens the impact from Park Street. Uh, the current use of the property, historical use, uh, there's a historic home on the property, currently be used for office purposes. Uh, over the recent years, the property has been used uh, also for a steel fabricating business that has uh, steel stored outside, leaves equipment out there. Uh, there's parking, which is both paved and gravel. Uh, there's no treatment of rain runoff from the site uh, with, from any of the parking areas. The neighborhood itself uh, is situated on the westerly side, of course, it's the public services, safety services building. Uh, on the east are uh, multifamily or two-family dwellings plus commercial. Northerly is the uh, Bandstand Common as well as Flint uh, Library. Uh, the proposal is to uh, move the historic home onto a new foundation which will preserve the home, also will improve the site distance from the driveway, which will be discussed more fully by Peter. Uh, in addition, uh, they, they plan to construct 50, 50, over 55 housing within one building. Uh, the, the bottom level will be parking, which is good and inside parking for elderly, uh, plus a, a small surface parking area as well. Uh, one feature of this is required by the zoning is that 15% of the units will be affordable. That's eight units in this project. Uh, that's a benefit to the town. Uh, this project will provide alternative housing. Right now, seniors have a choice of renting, moving out of town, uh, or moving to the, the stretches, the outreaches of the town, or staying in a large house that could be terribly expensive. This gives them a, a viable option to stay within town. It's also located within the center of town, uh, which also helps to revitalize the center of the town. One of the features we have to prove is the appropriateness of the use uh, of the site. Uh, it's close proximity to amenities, a walkable neighborhood, uh, the ability of seniors to participate in the youth activities in town by watching that or having high school uh, dramatic events, they're able to participate. Uh, it's all in walking distance from this site. Uh, the garage being under the building, again, is a, a feature for elderly and not having to clean off their motor vehicles during the winter. Uh, it's certainly near emergency responders. There's no, no problem in that regard. Uh, the J.B. McLean House, as I said, would be moved to help preserve it as well as improve the site distance. So those are appropriateness of the site for the particular use. Tell me, of course, felt it was appropriate uh, last year, year before at this point, I guess, where they rezoned it. Uh, the benefits to the town are multiple. Uh, first, it provides senior housing, which is clearly defined as a need. Uh, it provides affordable housing, which helps the town maintain or achieve its 10% by requiring 15% here. Uh, in addition, while it's not necessarily an element of zoning, uh, senior housing, we all know, we're involved in finance, uh, that senior housing does not impose the town or cost on the town that regular housing does because there's no demand in the school system. So it's a positive cash flow for the town. One of the site features you're going to hear, one of the benefits is off-site is an offer to improve the bandstand park. Uh, Tom will describe that in more detail. 
uh, and again, preserving the uh, historic home, <coughs> excuse me, and economic vitality of the area is also a benefit. Briefly, as far as waivers are concerned, uh, as you can see from the plan, the westerly parking is within the side yet setback. We are going to be requesting relief from the Board of Appeals. We'd greatly appreciate if the CPC would be inclined to support us in, in that endeavor to allow those five parking spaces at that location. They're right next to the uh, public safety building, so they will not impact any by, by being in that side yet area. Uh, I'd like to at this point turn it over to Peter Over and we'll continue with the civil engineering aspect of the project. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. With the board's permission, I'd like to address you from here. And uh, uh, Joe Grillo. Is that the front handing out paper? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's uh, faster than you, Peter. Sorry. Uh, Joe. Joe's right there, Peter. Joe's going to hand out the slides that we're going to present so that you can follow along and also uh, operate the, uh, the uh, projection for us. I had initially intended to start with uh, uh, the environs of the site, but I think Brad fairly well uh, covers that. So I'd like to jump right on to some uh, more specifics about the existing site. Uh, the current site, as Brad said, is about uh, 4.25 acres. And the existing upland on the site is about 49% uh, impervious as it sits now. There are the uses that uh, Brad had mentioned on it of uh, automotive, steel fabrication, an office building, and a garage. Uh, the buildings, the automotive use is uh, 5,200 square feet approximately. The steel fabrication building, and if you could point those out, Joe. Yeah, automotive. That's the automotive use. The steel fabrication building is 3,200 square feet. The garage, 983 square feet. And the office building, which is going to remain, is 1,732 square feet. As Brad mentioned, the southern portion of the site uh, is first a steep embankment and then a wetland that ultimately uh, goes all the way to the uh, Ipswich River. The topography, and Brad mentioned this a little bit, but I'll just go over it in a little more detail. Uh, it starts off from, from uh, Park Street and slopes in a fairly gentle direction downhill southerly. Uh, when you get to approximately the green line, the existing forestation on the site, uh, it drops rapidly down 10 and 12 feet uh, to the bordering vegetated wetlands and then the wetlands slope uh, somewhat gently to the Ipswich River. The proposed site plan, uh, as I indicated, is going to keep the office building We have that? Yeah. yeah so okay, what's that? The images weren't zoomed, but they should be now. Oh, is that? Can we go to the proposed site plan? Yep. The proposed site plan, as Brad indicated, is going to keep the uh, the historic McLean House, uh, but move it. And the move is uh, for two reasons, as Brad also mentioned. It's on a rather poor foundation, and we think that uh, from a rod standpoint and so forth, it would be good to put it on a new board concrete foundation. And then the site distance for our uh, access, primary access, or only access actually to the site uh, on the westerly portion of the property needs to be improved uh, for the westerly bound traffic on Park Street. Uh, the distance, uh, the, uh, the location that we've moved it to and shown on these site plans are more in keeping with what was shown to the uh, town meeting. I know that uh, Brad and uh, uh, Kami made an initial presentation some uh, weeks ago to you and we had a little different location of it. We have moved it 12 feet back from the street line, which is where, where uh, it, it was in the initial presentation. The parking for the Office use is all behind it, uh, and is that uh, gray area that you see in the central uh, location. Uh, and in that area, there are 12 spaces. They're not to be de designated, but there are 12 spaces as required by the zoning for uh, the office building. And there are two handicapped spaces there. <clears throat> uh, the office building is entirely serviced by the uh, surface parking. The senior housing building is the large Y-shaped building that you see there. It covers approximately 34,323 square feet. As Brad mentioned, 
it contains 50 units is allowed by the zoning and has parking underneath. Uh, it's kind of faint, but if you look carefully at the plan, you see the parking is shown on the site plan. There are 80 cars uh, in, within the building itself, and they're designed to be assigned to, to the uh, owners of the units in the building. Two of those parking spaces near, nearest to the elevator as required by the handicap standards are handicapped spaces. The remaining cars that are required uh, to make 88 for the uh, housing at 1.75 cars per unit uh, are outside spaces uh, and are mingled in with the 12 uh, outside spaces that are uh, provided for the office. So there are eight surface parking spaces that are under zoning required for the senior housing. Access to the site is to be provided uh, directly from Park Street, and it has a 24-foot uh, lane width coming off of Park, and all the turning lanes and, and uh, movement lanes within the uh, uh, site itself are at least 24 feet in width. Um, there's a zoning table on the plan, and it's kind of hard to, to see, so we'll blow it up here for you. Uh, there are certain criteria that were agreed to as far as the zoning was concerned. Um, when the, when the uh, senior housing zoning passed town meeting. And the dimensional controls are listed here. I'll just read them off quickly. The front yard set back 25 feet, we meet, it's 26. The side yard is 20, uh, and the rear yard is 20. We meet that uh, with the exception of the parking, which uh, Brad mentioned, and I'll go into a little further. Uh, the rear yard is, is uh, all the way to the uh, uh, Ipswich River and is 175 feet. The minimum frontage requirement, 250, we have 295 feet. Minimum area requirement of four acres, we have 4.25 acres. Maximum building height of 45 feet. Uh, the architect tells us it's 44.2 feet. The maximum lot coverage of buildings is up to 40, we have 20. And uh, minimum open space is 20, we have 30. The distance between building is 20, and we have 28.8. And the maximum number of units is 50. All those are in compliance with the, uh, uh, the zoning bylaw. However, there are five spaces which uh, came to be in this location through some of our discussions with the uh, Conservation Commission. Uh, the Conservation Commission has a 100-foot buffer area which has some separate rules uh, from the maximum um, uh, resource area, which is the land subject to flooding. And so these spaces were moved out of uh, position along the driveway entering the parking garage uh, and put in this location um, but unfortunately there wasn't room for the whole space so approximately half of the spaces are about uh, 10 feet <coughs> we're requesting to go in the setback area we've had a number of discussions with the fire department and the police department in North Reading and there, there were a couple of concerns that were shown uh, the main one was access for the uh, fire truck, and it was noted that uh, ambulance, ambulance access is likely to be required with an older population. Uh, and so we've uh, taken a look at the auto turn configurations, which is actually required by the fire code, uh, to see what the turning movements look like on the site. And this is the uh, ambulance, uh, the uh, North Reading Ambulance, which is a fairly large truck ambulance, and it would enter the site off of Park Street uh, from either direction, actually, uh, and come in and turn in the parking in front of it, uh, and it would be able to make a three-point turn in the turning circle that's provided. The red is obviously the uh, vehicle entering, uh, the uh, blue is the vehicle backing up, and the green is the, the uh, vehicle leaving. Uh, this, this, uh, these turning movements are the same for the ladder truck, uh, which we have another thing, if that's just a bigger truck. Uh, the ladder truck can make the same uh, three-point turn maneuver coming on site. We do show that coming from the fire department. Um, and, uh, uh, but this has not been finally approved by the, the uh, fire department. Uh, the uh, safety officer wanted to review it with the fire chief and uh, so it's uh, continuing to be reviewed by the, the uh, fire department. We also have shown on the site plan um, 
some turf, what are called turf stone pavers on the very easterly portion of the site. These are provided to uh, allow for a hard surface for a, uh, a fire vehicle or uh, fire equipment ladders and so forth to come down that uh, easterly side of the building on a, on a uh, supported surface should it be necessary. Uh, but the turf stone is actually a matrix and it's uh, a combination of a concrete web with grass inlay. So it actually looks like grass once you get it done. We've used that before and it's been very effective in areas where there's not a lot of use and we certainly don't expect this to get a lot of use. And I'd like to briefly discuss the utilities on the site. Uh, the, as Brad mentioned, uh, the parking is underneath this building and as such, it's, it's actually a parking garage. There's a distinction in the plumbing code between a parking garage that's fully enclosed and one that's 50% open. That's, that's not considered a parking garage in the plumbing code sense. And as, as such, it has to have a drainage system. And we've shown that drainage system to be a series of fluid drains that run through and they have to come out and they either have to discharge to a public sewer, which we don't have, or in the, in the case where you don't have a public sewer, it must discharge to a pipe tank. The pipe tank is designed to collect uh, not only the parking lot drainage, which will be minimal, it's only the snow that melts off of cars and so forth uh, from the floor drains, but also the elevator pit for the elevator in the building itself. The other class of drains we have is uh, are the parking lot drains. There's not a lot of pavement on this site. Uh, our imperviousness is predominantly the building, but the pavement uh, needs to follow a uh, treatment train, and it does. It goes uh, uh, down the entire parking lot, down the entrance to the garage, and is captured by two double great uh, catch basins, uh, one on either side of the um, driveway, uh, and then that goes through a treatment tr train, which is a deep sump catch basin, a priority particle separator, and then onto a level spreader with discharge to the wetlands. The other drainage system we have is the roof drainage system. And in this case, we've got uh, two types of roof drains. We have some that are internal, which will handle basically the, uh, the front uh, portions of the, uh, of the project's roofs. Uh, and then one which is uh, uh, external, which will uh, handle the back portion of the project's roof. And the reason for this is to collect all of the roof runoff, which is presumed clean under the DEP regulations, um, and discharge it uh, into an infiltration system, which the infiltration system is shown there, and it consists of six rows of uh, uh, storm tech uh, infiltration chambers, uh, each row being 13 chambers uh, long. Um, that is the heart of our mitigation system for flow. And as I indicated, uh, the site now, uh, the upland portion of the site is almost 50% impervious. Uh, this handles the uh, uh, infiltration runoff requirements and also the flow mitigation, um, giving us a reduction in flow towards the, the uh, wetlands. We did do a, a hydrologic calculations and we have a runoff comparison. The watersheds here are fairly simple. Um, this is the existing condition watershed. These are the existing condition watersheds. And the uh, subcatchment 1.1 is the bulk of the site, which has the uh, um, automotive use and, the, and the, the steel fabrication use in the office building. There's a small subcatchment called subcatchment two, uh, which does not discharge to, to the wetlands on the site as does subcatchment one, uh, but discharges towards the uh, public safety building, the police and fire station. Um, when the project is built, the subcatchments will be divided into subcatchment uh, 1.2 which is indicated in the proposed here, and that's, that consists of the building, uh, which as I indicated was uh, presumed clean and would be directly infiltrated into the ground as part of the stormwater management. Uh, Subcatchment number 1.1, which is the remaining uh, parking lots and so forth. 
the office building and, and uh, landscaped areas. The uh, 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 paid portions of that will all go through the treatment train. The rest of it, the landscape uh, areas, uh, discharge directly to the wetland. Uh, the remaining watershed, uh, 2.1, uh, is, is reduced significantly in size, and that's the watershed that discharges towards the uh, public safety building, the fire and police station. Uh, and then there's an additional uh, watershed uh, which was necessary due to the grading. It's a small area which discharges towards Park Street. Um, the grading uh, to get over the septic system and accommodate the grades had to, and, and not actually take water from Park Street needed to come up in grade uh, coming off of park, the Park Street pavement. And so that small portion until we get to a high point uh, discharges towards Park Street. Uh, the flow, however, from that area is de minimis under the uh, stormwater reg regulations. Um, I'm not going to sit here and read all these numbers to you, but the, the, this is the chart that indicates the results of the um, stormwater analysis that we did. We did uh, look at the routings for the two 10, 25, and 100 year storms. And in all cases, we've reduced both uh, rate and volume to the receiving point, whether it be the wetlands or, or toward the, uh, toward the uh, public safety building. The only place where there's any increase at all is, and that, that those are the red columns, is the, uh, the uh, small discharge towards Park Street where the grading uh, is required to uh, come up off a pack to maintain the <coughs> uh, As you all know, we need to have a septic system, and we do have one designed. Uh, it's been designed for 50 elder housing units at 150 gallons per day for 7,500 gallons, and includes the office flow of 260 gallons for a total of 7,760 gallons. It's a pressure distribution system, which is required uh, for a system this size. And we actually designed it as two independent systems. That's no longer a requirement of the code, but in this particular instance, it allowed us to put them at two different grades, uh, the one being right in front of the building being higher than the one as you enter the site. Uh, SC, uh, uh, field one is higher than field two. Um, and then it has the additional advantage. We've done a number of, uh, of uh, projects like this. Uh, the one that comes to mind is Sunrise and Linfield. Um, it's nice to have uh, two fields so that if you need to service mm -hmm. one, if you need to change out a pump or a valve or something like that, the system can, the uh, building can continue to be maintained uh, on the uh, single field while that uh, operation is taking place as each uh, field can work independently. Uh, the testing for, uh, with the Board of Health for the entire leach system is complete and it's totally designed. We have not yet submitted it, however, pending uh, some of the final uh, decisions that need to be made on fire access and so forth. Uh, as far as water is concerned, you I'm sure know that we are right below the town's water tank. Uh, we, there's a 10 inch line that comes up Park Street and reduces to an 8 inch line. We intend to uh, tie directly uh, to the 10 inch, uh, to the 8 inch line, excuse me, uh, with a proposed 8 inch stucco iron line which, which will provide both the domestic and fire to the building itself. It's likely a 2 inch domestic that would be required and 6 inch fire for the fire suppression system inside the building. Uh, from that location where we enter the building, we're also going to continue on and provide a new fire hydrant uh, at the end of the turning circle for the fire department. We did call the uh, uh, North Reading uh, Water Department and talk to Mark Clark, and the one fire flow test that he has here is a little bit old, but the uh, uh, fire uh, flow rate was about 7,150 7, gallons per minute at 20 PSI, which is the fire department standard. The reason it's so high is there's a 10 inch line feeding it and it's right below the tank. Um, I don't think anybody thinks that there's not enough water there to uh, service a fire here. Um, 
We were asked early on in this design what it was going to be like uh, as far as the grade separation was concerned at the fire station, and we early on produced this detailed uh, plan of, of how it's going to be handled um, at those five spaces. There is quite a grade separation, and we intend to handle it with both a retaining wall and a, uh, and a slope. And the proposed retaining wall, you can show it down the bottom there, Joe. The proposed retaining wall will run along the uh, uh, common line between us and the public safety building, and then it will slope up to the actual parking, and we've shown uh, where the cars will park, the five cars that park there. Um, there is an existing fence uh, that, that we show in the, in the uh, cross section too, uh, which we intend to leave. Um, and the landscape architect has provided us with some proposed plantings in that area to make it both a focal point uh, and also to uh, shield the parking lot a little bit from uh, public view. I do note that uh, uh, there is some of the landscape on what is the police department side of the public safety building. That will be done with the permission of the uh, police department, and I believe the applicant is in a position where he is willing to plant it and maintain it. And that's a picture of the type of wall that we're talking about. We're talking about a large stone wall that tends to look, excuse me, a large uh, granite wall that tends to look like a, a granite stone wall uh, of large concrete blocks that are filled uh, in order to make the great difference. We did do a, uh, a limited traffic study, but all what we thought was necessary for the proposed uh, um, site. Um, and it consisted of a site distance study um, uh, based on the traffic speeds. And you just had a less than the 85th percentile. I don't think I have to uh, go over that. But we did do the running speeds and determined, and interestingly enough, they were around uh, 40 miles an hour, excuse me, 30 miles an hour in both directions here, with a posted speed of 25 miles an hour. Now, those, those uh, speeds are done during the day but not when there's platooning and bunching up of the traffic. The required site distance in a westbound direction uh, coming toward the site was 227 feet, and there was only 165 feet available with the uh, McLean House in the site distance. With the uh, McLean House moved back, uh, and if we can go to show that, uh, the, the site distance is measured from the driver's eye, which is a certain distance back from the fog line of the street, uh, to a point in the roadway, I believe four and a half feet high, which is to simulate a car coming in that direction, and that would be the other end of it. And then you take the travel distance along the travel lane, that's 278 feet, considerably in excess of 165 feet. And it takes into account both the fact that, that the road could be wet and the stopping effectiveness is not as much, um, and that there's a down gradient slope going in that direction. Eastbound traffic uh, coming to the site driveway has, um, uh, the required site distance was 196 feet, and uh, is about a 530 foot distance uh, going in that uh, direction. Traffic generation was a bit more of a, of a, a question on this site. Uh, there was no ITE um, requirement for a uh, fabrication shop, and the automotive use there is kind of, it's not a busy gas station, certainly, and they do, I believe, do inspection stickers. They do inspection stuff. stickers. But, but it's, it's, it's a different kind of a use. Um, um, but we just took uh, an automotive use of that, uh, the total area of the whole thing, and said, what would that traffic generation be? Now, one of the things we do have with the steel fabricator, we have some large trucks that come on and off the site. We haven't accounted for that at all, and of course those will be eliminated once we get the new use. Um, but we looked at the generation, and I don't think what's important, we said that, that the 50-unit uh, multifamily housing would likely result in a reduction in the AM and PM peaks. Um, and that's because we have a varied population here. First of all, it's an older population because it is uh, senior housing. Um, we have people at vacation, go to Florida, go on cruises, don't get up in the morning, 
don't work, some of them. And so the traffic tends to distribute through the day, and that's why you can have a reduction in the AM and PM peaks, but still have an increase in the total uh, average daily traffic. And we do think that there'll be an increase, although it's modest. We uh, anticipated that it would be about uh, 41 vehicle trips per day. With that presentation, I'd like to introduce uh, Lawrence Reeves, who's the project architect, and Joe will continue to uh, operate the computer for him. Hi all, I'm Larry Reeves, uh, Reeves Design Associates, and uh, just, uh, we've, we've been working now, now for a couple of years on, on getting getting things through. We've been able to talk to a, a lot of groups and multiple times here in town about how to think about the, uh, the character and style of, of our building and the scale, and, and I, I think what we've really come down to is uh, you know, number one uh, we wanted to work hard to to create a building that that enhanced the, the center of town uh, by its use and also was um, you know, fully integrated in its character so that we didn't have, have an oversized building or a, or a, a high style modern building in a, in a town that, that is distinctly a very historical town center. I think from, uh, we, we, obviously the McLean House is a, is a strong element. That was number one, was that was staying from day one uh, and, and would generate you know, our, our base point. Um, and as you can see, actually on the left there of this view you, is uh, the adjacent, um, so it, um, uh, Victorian, simple Victorian home that has uh, you know, kind of pulls off of the colonial style as well as and a lot of not a lot of detail there, but I think the you know that that helped us to be able to essentially tuck in a, a Georgian colonial facade on the front, we'll call it the, the northerly nose of our building. Uh, directly opposite of the library. You can see that peeking through on the left side. <clears throat> I think then if we want to flip to the next pick, you can see a little further the, the uh, McLean house is in the foreground. Um, happens that the, um, you know, our larger building in the background is actually sits, sits back behind the McLean house, um, about 30 feet separates the two. Um, and, and off of Park Street, as a reference, the, um, the white and blue sections that you see there actually sit about uh, 100 and, uh, 140 feet back from Park Street, uh, significantly behind, so that you know, we do, are able to create a real nice courtyard in that area. And this, this view then shows the how we've, we've treated the building as, as kind of a cluster of, of sort of historically referenced styled structures. Um, and that we, we have attached them, whereas in a, a typical historic town center, they may or may not be attached. Uh, but the, the groupings allowed for some, some strong similarities in their style, some sense of, a, of an additive building, uh, but we kept the scale roof slopes and roof types so that they're consistent with um, the you know, very typical uh, structures in, especially in the center of town, but actually all throughout North Reading. <coughs> I mean, you know, we, we did run kind of the gamut in our, um, in our styles with the Georgian Colonial up on Park Street at the, the front nose kind of tucked between them the two houses, so it really does feel like a, 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 you know, three houses in a row as opposed to a larger building. Uh, and, and then we did variations of colonials as we went back and included in, in the center section, that white section, a, a hipped roof federal style that really plays off of the McLean house as well as, as some typical North Shore uh, uh, 
stately homes, uh, three-story stately homes in the area. And then we have to the next, uh, we can look at the plan here and get a sense. We've got uh, Park Street up on the, on the top of the, the view. Yeah, there you go. Oriented opposite of or, or 90 degrees different from, from Peter's files there, but we do come in um, at, Off the rotary we do have our main entrance off to the to the lower right of the rotary uh, Or I should say the, the roundabout there in the uh, in our upper parking area um, That being our center central entrance uh, We then have it, it, it is a y-shaped building uh, 18 units on on the first and second floors um, I, I have shown actually those hash marks are, are the uh, proposed uh, locations for our affordable units in the building. And then we do have our uh, sort of a central access uh, circulation area that's adjacent to the elevator. Um, that gets us up and down. Um, and then I flip to the next, uh, next page and you can see our, our sort of full layout of the, the parking down at the lower level, uh, but sort of back at the center of the building there is at, next to the elevator in the lower level, we do have a community, a, a, a common area for the residents, um, which would include bathrooms and some storage, and most importantly, uh, access out to the common area um, and uh, out to the lower level. And we do have a full story drop from the front entrance to this rear area, and this, which which really gives us a terrific southerly exposure on this this open courtyard area, and uh, um, would be a you know really terrific outdoor space for everyone. We've actually re retained both planted areas and and open areas for activities, um, and while minimizing our our hardscape out, out in that area. I think then this that's kind of our, our basic layouts. We do have for back up here, just the second floor, very similar to the first. Third floor has 14 units on that level rather than 18. Uh, we've tucked our units into the roof lines so that they uh, um, treated the third floor windows with dormers, uh, much more historically appropriate helps to break up the roofs and larger gable roofs in uh, a more appropriate way. Next there, just a, a quick view. We've, we have a roof plan here. The dashed areas is actually a, a, a flat areas that will be, we'll have our mechanical equipment uh, tucked in behind. It won't be visible from anywhere. Um, and that, that helps us with, uh, when we, keeps our, our building heights down as well, able to, to work with it that way. I think then that can do it. I'll, I'll, from there, I'd like to pass it on over to, uh, to Thomas and talk about some uh, landscape work. Good evening, board members. Tom Miner, Hawk Design, Sagamore Mass, Principal and Landscape Architect. Um, this first slide is uh, just a quick uh, overview of the whole site. You can see that the uh, close to half the site is undeveloped at the southern section. It's going to be, uh, you know, mature forests and, and wetlands. And uh, on the uh, west side, uh, which is the right side of this plan, uh, we've there's there's going to be a, an existing uh, line of trees on the adjacent properties, and if uh, Joe, you can go up to the where the property line meets the uh, Park Street, and from that point all along the property line down south to keep going all the way down the back of the building, more along the, all the way down. <laughs> So it cuts around the back of the building and, and goes down about 60 feet down uh, another property line. Uh, we're supplementing that uh, existing tree line with a six foot high privacy fence um, just to uh, provide separation and uh, to help uh, screen some views from 
both sides of the uh, the uh, fence, and you can see that whole line is is going to be the uh, the fire lane with the uh, the grass grass creek block. Uh, next slide, next slide, please. This is a blow up of uh, our site showing the uh, proposed landscaping. It's uh, it's moving along. There's still uh, some uh, coordination we have to do with with Peter. But um, as is uh, the case in all of our designs, we try to uh, keep predominantly native drought tolerant, uh, so suitable, uh, suitable for the local conditions, especially uh, in this site and particularly in, in the back along the wetlands that is 100% uh, uh, native material. And um, that is, uh, stay, stay there, Joe, please. Why we're here, this is a, uh, this is a, a concept of the uh, outdoor um, amenity space, uh, still, still to be <coughs> designed, but typically we have, uh, we have table seating, a grilling area, uh, you, sometimes a fire, fire pit or a, 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 a self-contained water feature. Um, along with uh, uh, shade structure, whether it's a, a, a gazebo style building or a, an open trellis pergola. Um, and we are uh, currently uh, involved in uh, working at the request of the uh, Conservation Commission to, to create a, a, law, a bigger uh, transition, naturalized transition zone between the uh, the walk that's shown there and the existing woods line so that there's there's less uh, maintained turf along the uh, the wetlands and that embankment there if you can zoom out to the uh, to the full site again uh, along park street we're uh, showing uh, larger street trees at approximately 30, 35 feet on center. Those are the, the dark green trees. The smaller pinkish trees are uh, flowering trees at uh, anywhere from 20 to 60 feet on center. Um, the, uh, the task we're dealt with is uh, with all the subsurface septic system uh, in that uh, entry yard uh, we cannot put shade trees over that and uh, or close to it so we've created some um, you can see some berms landscape berms around the edge of the parking lot from anywhere from 12 inches to, to 24 inches maybe three feet and those serve several purposes to give some uh, undulation to the the flat ground plane uh, to uh, screen to help to screen the parking from uh, Park Street and uh, more importantly to uh, provide uh, soil for for planting larger larger shrubs and even some smaller some smaller flowering trees um, as uh, you know, as as Peter pointed out we have site distances and fire <clears throat> fire turning radiuses we have to deal with uh, those really we, we still have to work with peter on those we're showing a uh, a tree right now in the middle of that uh, turn around that uh, is i don't believe from looking at those turning yeah, radiuses you just that one right out that it's gone that one's gone i believe you <laughs> um uh foundation plantings are uh we try to maintain four, four season interest with varied textures, foliage colors, flowers, uh, flower colors, uh, heights, uh, again, predominantly native material um, that, that's, that fits the, uh, that fits the uh, site and, and works with uh, Larry's architecture and the historic building. Um, lighting. Uh, we have, uh, we've shown three or four light poles along Park Street. Those are, will be a pedestrian uh, uh, pipe pole. Um, 
use uh, what we usually use is LED uh, dark sky feature uh, fixtures. Uh, if we need to screen them back back uh, screens for for any reason to for for shining into to uh, apartment bedrooms or uh, um, into uh, uh, <coughs> neighboring properties, we'll we'll add those uh, some some black. Dot, uh, circles along the uh, walkway, our, our lower level uh, light ballers, 36 to 42 inches high, and those will be the same type of fixtures, dark sky, LED fixtures, about 20 and 30 feet. We also show those in the back uh, amenity area, so we don't have any, we don't have any tall uh, light poles uh, that are gonna impact the neighbors. Or the uh, the residents of the building. Um, I believe that uh, uh, finishes up the site. We can move on to this. Um, a year or two ago, at uh, Bruce's request, I uh, I walked the uh, commons to to uh, see what we could uh, do to enhance uh, the common area and. Uh, <coughs> We, we decided to focus on the bandstand uh, because of the, uh, the uh, winter sledding that uh, goes on to, on the slope and uh, down towards the sidewalk. We wanted to stay out of there. So uh, as I walked it, it, it looked like we could, the biggest thing I saw was that there was no access to the, to the bandstand. So I believe without any topo information, just eyeballing it, I think we could get a uh, accessible walk from uh, from the corner from the intersection of Park Street there, and I believe it's Bow Street or uh, Haverhill Street, yes. and uh, we can uh, hopefully work it along that slope and uh, raise it up so we can get rid of the steps on the uh, the entrance to the to the bandstand so that's a fully accessible uh, bandstand. Uh, we could hopefully widen widen the portion of it to, to get some seating next to the bandstand and uh, some uh, pavement next to it for, for wheelchair uh, seating. And uh, there is some uh, some evergreen shrubs around it now. I believe they're boxwood and, and rhododendron that are, that are getting a little tall. Uh, whether we keep those or, or definitely enhance them with some, uh, some more flowering uh, maybe lower flowering sh shrubs and uh, some perennials <clears throat> that are drought tolerant and uh, uh, you know maintenance free to, to provide even more color into that area. Uh, we thought that would be a, a good uh, enhancement for uh, this space. Um, so that concludes my presentation and I guess we leave it up, to, uh, open it up for questions. All right. So, I could share sorry, just a couple of uh, clarifications, if I may. Uh, wanted to make sure it's publicly understood. The term of ownership is intended to be a condominium, uh, which gives control uh, over the use uh, and the quality of the facility in future years. In addition, there is a requirement in the bylaw that there be a specific finding in section 200-168 that the office use in the McLean building is compatible with U55. So we request that you find that in your decision. Uh, third item, to make it clear, there is an elevator. You heard Larry say that, but yes. there was some question on that. And the last point, as you can see from the corner of the plan, the name is 1818 on the Commons. Uh, that would be the name that you'd see in the future if this is successful. So thank you very much. Thank you. So if there's anybody in um, on Zoom that would like to ask a question, then you're going to have to go in that, unless Joe wants to do it. Because <laughs> I know you, you, uh, you're good with the technology. Um, you can raise your hand on, the, uh, on Zoom to ask a question. Uh, right now I'm going to entertain questions from the planning board that are here and Ryan that is uh, online with us also. Um, Warren, you have any questions? 
Uh, no, this pretty much follows <clears throat> the original presentation that we got as far as um, what was going to happen here with some, uh, of course, with some uh, detail. Yeah, it looks like a looks like a pretty nice project. Looks like something that will uh, fit in pretty good in the uh, in the center of town here. And I and I do agree it will enhance that, and it will provide some economic development as well, some economic improvement sure, in that in that area. So, um, um, so right at this moment, there's a lot to digest, but at this moment, I don't have any specific questions. So. David, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a few questions. First off, I I, I love the design. Um, I have to you guys with. Um, with everything from the site work, Peter, you know, the architecture. I love how just there's all different forms and it's architecturally correct. It's really interesting. Um, it's just really, really a delight to see. So hats off to everyone, Tom included. Um, but um, I want to say, but it's a good but. I just wanted to get back to this. <laughs> that wasn't a bad but. I want to get back to the, uh, the sight lines because I, I kind of agree with some of the town comments from, um, I think it was the chief, right? Chief mm -hmm. or was it? Uh, Sergeant Sergeant, okay, sorry, yeah. Sergeant Howe. Uh, I apologize. But, you know, I I agree when you came back here in August, I think, and it was in August, and in the, in the, the, the house, the McLean house was still, I think, in its present location, or maybe it was moved a little bit. The the sight lines, and I'm pretty much in agreement with that. I, I, I pull off like 165 or in that range. And so it's a, it's a vast improvement to move back. It actually goes out to like 250 uh, for stopping distance, you know, like up past the past the, uh, the library. The problem is what I see and maybe wasn't probably considered is both the trees, uh, uh, Tom, that are proposed as well as in from some of the renderings I've seen or another rendering that I have that is up on our, you know, I think that was submitted as part of this. It, it shows that that same picket fence. And I really do think um, I love a picket fence and it looks beautiful. And even if it's back from where it's at right now, another 10 feet, I really, with that up gradient and everything, I don't think you're gonna get the same sight line. So when I pull off, I kind of approximate based on that rendering where I see the picket, because the picket's not in the site plan and it doesn't need to be, but it's not in there, but when I pull off what I, what I see in that rendering as a sight line, you're picking up now a stopping distance, maybe 30 more feet um, if, you, if you go by that line. So that worries me because it's still, they're using the design of 25 miles per hour for that SSD and, and we all know, you know, that's optimistic. I mean, people coming around that corner um, from the nest or whatever are flying, usually um, coming down that hill. So uh, let's just say 30. At 30, with reaction time of, you know, one to two seconds or whatever, you're like right on someone's, you know, butt pulling in it, or pulling out or whatever. It's, it it's, it, it kind of worries me. So I think we have to be very mindful and I ask that you be mindful with looking at the landscaping plan in those tree, that tree placement I know you're up against the that trench system that's uh, for the septic that's right there, but I'm really worried that the building's great, but some of the enhancements uh, in front of it, the trees, the vegetation, are going to actually just take away the 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 effort you've made to move it back. You know, move it back, and you're going to still have kind of poor sight lines for what would be you know much more trips coming out of that driveway. I think you know. Than, than there is now. And it, and it really, you know, there's only another 20 feet for for the police department as well. And, 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 and Sergeant Howe kind of made the comment that he, he had a, one of the officers pull out and they timed, you know, not timed it, but, uh, you know, wheeled off the distance or whatever. And it's, it's really, it's right on the line there at 30 miles an hour coming around that corner and seeing someone pulling out. So um, I, would, I would just ask you kind of look at that. Um, and I know um, you already lost one tree in the turnaround, so I'm not looking to get rid of trees, but perhaps it's a taller type of tree, you know, um, you know, one that can just have more of a topping, you know, lollipop-ish kind of uh, shape. I'm not, I'm not, I'm definitely not a landscape architect, but uh, that would be one suggestion. And then a couple comments on the site plan too, it's right at that same curb where one takes 
a right and heads up west on, on uh, Park. I didn't see mention of any kind of ADA compliance right at that curb there. It just says vertical, you know, granite coming right in. So I'm, I'm, I'm sure that's just maybe an oversight needs to just be added, but I'm assuming you would want or need that to, you know, come down to meet, um, call it the sidewalk uh, or match sidewalk grade. That's one other. And then another is you showed it on that diagram of the retaining wall and there's a retaining wall that's kind of coming into the existing retaining wall that the police department has. And I don't know if you want to show that. Um, <clears throat> I won't forget what slide it was. I should have known it. It's a spreading. Yeah, it's a spreading There it is. Okay, so you do show the block. Okay. It's the existing block wall right there. Yeah. And then go back to plan B though, because that it's kind of pulling it off is what I'm, I'm I'm scratching my head on a little bit. It's coming, you know, it's kissing it. So are you most likely gonna have to, and it's all part of you know, means and methods, but are you gonna probably have to rebuild that wall or are you able to keep that wall in place, the existing one there, the concrete one for the police department to install that, do you think? That, that's a good question, and I haven't looked at that particular issue. Maybe one of the things we might do is put a radius on our wall rather than so that idea for the loading yeah. doesn't uh, come great back. Idea. I trust you're an engineer. I have not yep. met you before, but uh, yes, you, you talk like one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an architect, but yeah. 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 he does yeah. architectural yeah. stuff. So, we, you know, we have to watch our P's and Q's around him now, Peter. Not a good one, but, <laughs> no, but uh, anyways, uh, so yeah, I think that's a great idea because I was just curious how you're pulling that off. Yeah. Yeah. That, that lovely easy. radius above it, just bring that yeah. radius down into, into the wall. Maybe that would do it. Yeah, I think, I think that's a good point. We certainly will look at that. I mean, obviously, uh, a wall that's over four feet high requires a building permit and over six requires the design. And we do design walls and I haven't had one fall over yet, so I'm hoping. <laughs> uh, just in response to your other uh, questions, uh, the uh, police safety officer mentioned the same thing. Uh, he liked the picket fence, but he said if it's in the way, we'd have to remove it. And Bruce and I met with him and said that that and if the trees we did look, I looked with Joe at the uh, type of tree, what was it? Uh, and I'm no landscape architect, but it, it was uh, I got a up something maple. And I think I it has see. a fairly Sugar small maple. stem. Sugar maple. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it has a fairly small stem. Maybe the uh, landscape architect would speak to that. But again, we've told a safety officer if, if the location of those trees is a problem, we won't plant them there, we'll put them someplace else. Yeah. Those are good points that you raise. I think mean, perhaps we, it can just be a decision made at the time, you know, when you're, you've got everything moved, obviously the house is moved and, and uh, the site's further along. You're not putting the fence in right away anyways, but it would just be one of those right. things. Let's That's check it out. That's what Sergeant Howe asked if we could actually look physically on the ground once we get it built. Yeah. And he said we would. Yeah. The problem too, is, as you can see from the radius, is that it, it comes and turns around, so it creates more of a, an opaque surface as you see oh, it comes back itself, on you yeah. and you can kind of even see that in the rendering a little bit so it's uh it's definitely one to watch but again it's it's manageable so i it may not be a bad idea to put a traffic turning and entering sign on the uh, on the uh, inside curb there yeah so that somebody can at least it's at least a warning that when they come around that corner there's going to be traffic entering or exiting or we talked with officer how about that too and we said that we would provide a sign if, if we think it needs yeah. to be i also had mentioned previously and i wasn't going to mention it tonight but i think we need to add a sidewalk from our sidewalk to the sidewalk at the intersection of bow and park and bow and park if you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Well, you do You do show one, and again, in the renderings, there's one coming out of the McLean um, side of the circle. circle. Yeah, right oh, there. The circle. Right here. So it's, it's not really shown. No, it's not shown there. There's a, there's yeah. a, uh, a sidewalk to the east. Uh, which is not shown on the plan, but when I talk with it, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. existing. Can you existing. Go, to go, go to your proposed? I think we should put one right there where Joe was. Yeah, you show one right here, sweeping right into about here. No, that's or, not a good place for one because yeah, I didn't. Come I was the questioning that where I saw it. it didn't really go one tie in with any top. 
Yeah, one right right there where Joe is. Right, right, one right there. there you know people right. are going to want to go off the driveway side. No, they want to go to Dunkin' Donuts and they can use the one up above. But Yeah, <laughs> you know, that's what they'll do that way. But yeah. if they, if they want to go to the common, they can use the driveway. Yeah. You know? No, I think if they go, they hopefully they'll use this walkway here and then there are two sidewalks on the two Bow Street intersections. Right. Yeah. Getting a crosswalk there. Yeah, it's a crosswalk. Yeah. yeah. There I don't know who's in charge of crosswalks in North Reading, but I don't know. The police. They might be, or DPW. I, I can coordinate that with yeah. DPW. Mm. Yeah. It's it's one of those things. If you guys are right, willing to paint it, yeah. We'll we'll figure out we'll we'll figure out how to get it approved on the ground. We'd like to do that. You know, just just safety for your your folks right. or anybody crossing the street right there. That it's a real tough area to cross. <clears throat> It really is where you've got the 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 upper sidewalk there, that one there, that's in a good location. But the lower, and you know people are gonna cross down there, it's a wide area. Well, I would hope that they wouldn't because if they kind of come out of the building and they're at the lower level, they gotta walk up and that is about an eight percent grade coming up out of the garage. So yeah. I don't think they're gonna be encouraged to do that. If they use the walk system that we've indicated there, it's all pretty much flat and, and it's good access. So I would hope that they would go the way Joe's walking now yeah. and cross well, there and then they could go to either the Dunkin' Donuts or the... It's a little, you understand the, the grades in here a little more than we do right now. Mm -hmm. you know? I actually have a question on, on that. Yes, is, is the um, Inside the, the, under, the under the building parking, is that grade or that parking all the same throughout the entire building? The parking is all the same grade. It's all yes. the same grade. Yeah, and it's and it's not lower than the driveway coming in or anything like that. It's lower than the driveway coming in. It goes downhill. Uh, we have a cross section that shows that. Maybe the architect could explain how that works. Well, this, just so, if you catch, just I was thinking of the catchment of of rainwater uh, entering the garage, unless you've got a catch basin at the at the intersection of the garage and the, the driveway. Trench. We you slope know, down. You can't. You can't allow the rainwater to go in there because we have to have that collection system for an right. underground garage. Um, and that, under but the we slope system, down right? from the door to the basins and down from the parking lot to the basins. So there's a so there's like an MDC trap in there that catches oil and all that. Well, hopefully the uh, uh, <coughs> the uh, proprietary particle separator has that. That's what they call them, and that's what they, yeah, that's what they call them now. Yeah, that and then there's gas right traps here. in the catch basins. So, yeah. so this is yeah, some yeah. proposed screening zone that might help uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Water going that'll, So that'll just have a maintenance program of some kind where you <coughs> check on a regular basis. You have to have that under the uh, uh, conservation requirements, and we've spent quite a bit of time talking to conservation about this plan. Yeah. We haven't filed it with them yet because we've got to iron out our final uh, things with the uh, fire department for mm -hmm. the safety access. Yeah. And then we'll file with conservation. Um, Joe, are those are those steel lids that are going to be on there, manholes on that tank? Oh yeah. I'm just saying that yeah, entry, I would imagine entry so. exit, entry exit of a garage, like it's gonna be 120 times. Well, I'm just saying. Yeah. There's going to be a noisy clink clink. clink. <laughs> Wherever it's got the unit right above there. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> no, they don't. If you set them right, they don't make any noise. So, if you not if Warren sets them. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys are we'll set see. Them, let me see if Ryan has any. Any questions? I got one more All thing. Right, they're, they're architectural, so they're probably through Larry. Um, so the elevator one was answered because I know Rich had that. The, yeah. the privacy fence, unless that was a that was an LA one. Sorry about that. Um, is that what kind of style fence is the six foot? It's a stockade, but what uh, is it? Wood? Is it PVC? What's proposed right now? PVC. PVC. Yeah, probably PVC. Yeah. Okay. The longevity. Yes. Well, yeah. There's no cars back there to really hit it. Well, there shouldn't be any cars near it on no, this that's, side. No, that's right. good. And the only time yeah. if there's ever an emergency is the fire. You might get a deer run into it occasionally, but. Yeah, so <laughs> have, can Bruce, can you add a deer door? You know, just so you can. Yeah, no, it's I, we'll, midway we'll down or something. They can walk around it. <laughs> <laughs> One other question was just, you mentioned the um, the lighting, which is, you know, looks beautiful all around the yeah. pass. Are there wall packs too, or is it just that kind of lighting, like on the building? Well, we will, obviously, we'll have. At, at you know, door, what, yeah. You know, really, the entrance is we'll, we'll probably rely on under canopy. Okay. Uh, the entrances. And, uh, we do actually have a, a, 
Our garage doors are actually recessed six feet from the base of the building. So okay. So we, we can be able to do the same Cast thing. it down yeah. there. Oh, is, did true. you do a photometric? Is that part of the set or did I miss it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you're not going to put any light poles up, What's the photometric on the camera? Well, they are yeah. putting light poles, aren't they, just all around the they bathroom? Poles, but they're all got covers no, on no, they're all, they're all short. No, no, they got the oh, they're few across the sidewalk. The, the sidewalk so. on... on uh, yeah, you get a few up there, right? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Again, it looks beautiful. Great yeah. job. I'm really excited about it. So thank you for your time. Yeah. Ryan, do you have any questions? Uh, just a couple of comments. Of, of, one, I think I think it's very thoughtful design. I think it's in general well the character in the town. Um, I echo David's concerns about the, the planting at the, at the street and the sight lines. Yep. Um, and then specifically when it comes to the proposed permeable paper access for fire truck, just I guess a general comment. It looks like it's a, a driveway curb, but is that correct? That's the intention there? Those are uh, 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 grass paves. Uh, they're a, a, a concrete uh, matrix, like a, a waffle, but the matrix is filled with grass, and it looks like grass when you get it done. I think he's asking that. Yeah, no, talking about just the curb. Curb. Yeah, Park Street. Is, At the curb, right? is there a curb cut? Around oh. the curb uh, entry. Oh, it comes off the. the uh, no, it comes off the curb, off the entrance. Yeah, we haven't really talked to the fire department about right that. Uh, That's what he's talking about. So right now there is no curb. Yeah, yeah. there's no curb. There's no there. curb there, right? Yeah. Correct. Yeah, I, my, my comment is typically around just the confusion of the driveway or preventing just casual access to that. It, it appears as though it's going to be cut as if it was a driveway. Well, there'll be a fence. I'm curious. Fire department has a comment about that. I guess my follow up would be regarding. That's something we should talk to the fire department about. Yeah, Sometimes we put sort a of breakaway gate so that nobody would be encouraged to go down there. Mm -hmm. I, I don't. It's definitely not meant to be the uh, entrance, and it will look like grass when it gets paved. You know, when the grass paves it. Well, a good, a good question is: How about in the winter time? If you get two feet of snow, are they gonna plow it? Just something for me. Yeah. He, he, um, it can be plowed. Yeah. Pardon? I said it can be plowed. Yeah, it can be, yeah. can be plowed. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it can be plowed. So we'll, we'll talk to the fire chief and, and, and figure out, you know, we'll we'll follow his suggestion for the maintenance sure. plan. Well, just a, just a thought is, is, is obviously going to be some kind of a, a, a landscape company that will have a contract to take care of this. Right. And, and because that was kind of, if they were, if, I, and I don't know how, if that's just too much for them to snow blow, to clear, you know, um, when they do the walkways and all that. You can scrape it though, that stuff is great. Yeah, you just I keep know. the blade I, up, right? Yeah. I don't know, some friends of mine, I have, I have it in my yard. Aromatic, they planted aromatic plants and all those, so when you walk on the walkway, so when you walk up to the oh, house, it nice. releases <laughs> all kinds of aromatics, so it's pretty cool. <laughs> They work really it can be done, yeah. Just yeah that. that, that's a good, it's a good point, a good suggestion, and we'll, we'll close the loop with, uh, yeah. first with the, with the fire chief and then, yeah. and then back to you folks. Yeah. yeah. So, Ryan, okay, so you, you're on that curb cut. Anything else? No, that would be a good two comments regarding the fire access. Okay. Thank you. It's a good one. Yeah. So, my biggest comment was going to be are we using native plants? And you answered that. I'm, you know, when we got non-native stuff, it just it may look great now, but it may go everywhere, and it's just not what we want. we'd like to see. More native stuff and drought tolerant, hardy stuff is a good thing. Good thing. We don't like to waste our water on our drinkable water on just grass and and flowers and stuff. They're nice to have, but okay, yeah. Just yes, one, yeah, just a nice presentation by everybody. Good job. You know, you still got it, Peter. So, <laughs> you guys good? Yeah. I'm going to open this up to uh, the public. I've got a couple folks here. Do you have any questions? I'm all set. Next presentation. Uh, Ma'am? Ma okay. Just just a minute on, on Zoom. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't recognize you. Just, it's our liaison. Yeah, it's our liaison. Well, that's all right. Okay. <laughs>
<laughs> can you can you see any hands on Zoom? Bring the, oh, there they are. So does anybody have a question that's on Zoom? Yes. Go, go ahead. Who, who is this? Can I speak? My name's Nick. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead, Nick. Yeah, my name's uh, Nick Waterface. I live at 136 Park Street. Mm -hmm. That's uh, about three, not about, it's three houses east of uh, the proposed site, same side. Um, I moved to Mount Vernon in 1959. I bought this house in 75, and I've been living here since 75. I'm very familiar with the theory. Um, a couple things, anything would be an improvement, almost anything, than what's there currently. Um, so I don't have a problem with that. Um, concerned, and we've talked, you've talked about it, um, the architects, designers, and whatever, traffic studies, they talked about buying sites, we're talking about the tents, we're talking about trees. But when I get out of my house and I'm just facing to the harness, that's the great something you mentioned. Yes. If you walk, you want to go to the library, like I did today, there's a crosswalk that you go across to the back of the library, and you can't. I don't even use that because they fly around the point, you know, going from the police station to here. Whether it's 35, 40, 25, I don't know. So I can't use that crosswalk. But if um, cross right where I am, go across, um, so you can get a good view of what's coming around that point. Um, I use the, let's call it the automotive, Repair shop, like the current property, and basically he does stickers. That's it. That's about it. There's some other stuff in the back. Getting the stickers there for about 15 to 20 years. You got two vehicles. And when you come out of here, trying to take a left hand turn, you can't do it by going ahead to the going to the boot station. It's not free, it's not picket fences, not the, the building that's going to be moved back. Road is elevated. So that's to me is a problem. Uh, the other thing I'd like to say is I appreciate like you know you, a developer's got to try and fix units, and I think it's like way too many for the place for that piece of property. Uh, they talk about uh, it's an older population, only fifty-five plus. I'm not, I mean, they could, somebody said they're sleeping late, working. How many people, 55 plus, are going to live there? And nobody said what the price point was. Oh, well, but, but what I'm saying is, there's going to be a lot of vehicle trips in and out of here, not plus, I think one of the slides said plus 20. I think that's very naive. And they got, like, I think it was, I spent some time looking at the uh, um, commission's website today, and there's like, I think, 80 plus parking spaces in there. Those cars get rolling in the adult 20 state any trips down here. So that I'm wondering about. And then watching, uh, seeing the slides on how they're going to get, you know, drain the water off. My two vehicles have an inspection crew in May. I go into that inspection station and he, that property is pumping water right from the school out. So there's a lot of water in there. The house next to me, which is two doors down from that property, pumps water all spring out of the house. So these are some of my concerns with what because what is proposed here. Um, and I think that is it. That is it. Thank you. Thank you, Dick. Thank, Thank you, Nick. You, Nick. Uh, to answer your question, if, if, if I can, with your, your permission, you. as far as uh, access by the library, we, we don't tend to use that for access or egress to the site. That's strictly a fire department access. So our vehicles won't come in and out there. 
And I didn't say that there'd be 41 total vehicles. It was an increase of 41. It's an increase the, every day of 41. Yeah, the average daily traffic, I believe, is 186 or something like that. Hmm. And it was kind of naive to think we're only going to increase one station. I look at I believe that 80 parking stations there on the low, I think it was. You're, you're talking about, you call it a proposed tax of students. Tax of students? They're going to be sleeping late, not going out, and not working. I, I, I don't think so, sir. Well, so you, you, have, yeah, you have to be 55 to get in, but you, you don't get out at 55. People stay there. It's usually the, the, the place that they buy for their, their final home or residence. Well, fortunately, I have a young wife, so she's like 35. So she's still working. So in there, you're going to have somebody 55 to go 10, and they're going to have younger siblings, so not you know, younger or whatever. I mean, so, I mean, your numbers may sound great, but you get this past it. So, you know, we're talking about trees, picket fences, light poles. So, I mean, that's, that's great, but let's talk about, like, so I down I, here, I invite all, all the commission just to go out to the harness nest and walk towards, if you haven't done it, to the property and try to go over to that line and get forward, see what happens. So, then, the problem. This is Chris Aiden, I'm the chairman. So you were talking, yes, sir. You, you saw that there were 41 increased travel, uh, trips, travel trip day, trip. trips. trips of the day, yeah. okay? That's over the original 146 trips, Existing. I believe is what you said. The actual numbers that they use are 180. <clears throat> you have that, Joe? I will pull it up. Um, so he, they're adding on a 41 trips. It's not that they were saying it's only going to be 41 trips. So they, they no, are no, going to have 41 plus. I, I, Mr. I can read that. Okay. Understand that. All right. Trips plus 41. We got to be naive to think that. And that sounds great. Well, you, you know what? I've been, it? sir, I've been sitting on this board for over 20 years and I've heard a lot of traffic engineers tell me these things and I haven't believed them. And then they build what they're gonna build and it ends up they're usually pretty bright. Um, it, it is amazing that they're using statistics and standards that have been uh, done for many, many, many years. So I understand what you're saying. You're concerned about the number of trips that are gonna be coming and going from that location. Uh, not everyone in that location is not going to be two cars allowed in there. They're only going to have space for one and a half. 1.75 or whatever. Okay, okay, you've got the numbers okay. right in front of you. Yep. So, you, you know, right there you can only have the number of trips that were less than the number of trips we're talking about. Half of, you know, twice that number is not what they're talking about. So, yeah, we could go look at some I'm of I'm just pointing this out. I'm not arguing. I don't want to waste your time. Okay. Well, no, you're not, not wasting our time. We, we need to hear yeah. this. I'm just trying to explain it to you so you understand. That's all. Well, I certainly understand it. Okay. It's right there. Okay. We want to start today. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. I just wanted to mention that um, I don't think we have a final quote for it yet, but I have asked for a quote for peer review services for stormwater and traffic. So right. we would expect to have okay. that looked at. Right, that's that's something that's going to get done on the side, not by us and not by them. Right, right. it's going to get reviewed by a third party engineer. Okay, so are there any other questions on Zoom? All right, hearing none. Any more questions from the- oh, Real quick, sorry I have a question or more of a comment. Who is this? This is uh, Adam. I'm on Zoom as Adam S. Sorry, I live at 140 Park Street uh, next door to Nick. Okay, and go ahead. I basically just want to um, sort of piggyback on what he was saying, that uh, the crosswalk is directly in front of my house. Uh, my family probably uses it more than anybody else in town, walking the dog. 
us hitting our own exercise multiple times per day. And I will say that is a cross at your own risk crosswalk because of that hill um, right at the top there by the intersection. So as it is currently stands, I just get completely infuriated when cars don't stop because they come whipping over that hill. So regardless of what the numbers say of the increase in traffic, any increase in traffic, um, more than it already is, is adding to the danger of everything. And now when I'm walking my family and my baby across the street, like I have to have my head on a swivel anyway at a crosswalk. So unless there's something we can do with the town and the police or the speed limit right there, sure. So you know, sir, adding more cars come and going is just going to just add to the madness of what it currently is. So uh, well, not really a question, more of a comment. Okay, um, let me ask you a question so, though. You're, you're talking, yeah. you're talking the, the crosswalk that comes into basically at the library driveway. So, is that yeah, driveway further down, right? Yeah, yeah correct. So and directly across the your, street your from problem, your plot problem is yeah. looking towards the common. Is that correct? Yes, please. Towards the police station and the common in this property. So you're to the you're to the west of you, correct? You're coming towards him, yeah. Towards you, so yeah, coming to the west. No, three that car is on that crosswalk right there. That's the crosswalk I'm talking about. Yeah. That black car in the picture. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. No. No. I, we understand. So we're trying to make sure what side are we looking at? Is it that line of traffic where the black car is, or is it the line of traffic? going east that you're having the most um, trouble so with? One, so when I'm, uh, I guess it's the cars coming east, but they're coming over the hill. Okay, that, okay. That way, so you have you have to be eyes open because people are coming over that hill with a lot of kids from the high school on their phones. And like, it's not only just one, when one car stops, that car's coming in hot behind the other one. Yeah. And I'm worried there's going to be a, you know, three car pile up and I'm met right in the middle of the crosswalk okay. in the middle of a car accident. Now it's equally dangerous coming the other way because sometimes the library has signs out when I'm trying to cross back and there's cars coming that way too. Okay. The speed limit needs to drop to like 20 or something. Well, it's already 25 there. So if you're not following that no speed limit, it is too, well, it, it's marked as it's marked and signed as 25. So, okay. and I, I, I know that for a fact. I drive that road every day. So, so but, but right now, right, right now, we've, we've got that issue, and we're going to see what we can do about that. Um, is there any anything else on the property itself? Yeah, just, just a quick comment. Um, you know, when, when they when they move that building and increase that sight line, it's it's all, there's also the matter of um, the fact that you'll be able to see them coming sooner, and they'll be able to see you sooner. Hopefully, that's what will happen, and that will make it safer. It's the hill, sir. It's the elevation. Okay. The elevation. Yeah. yeah right. No, I, I think. Walk. Yeah, I, I understand. I can, I, I, I can just say too. I mean, Nick and Adam, I totally get what you're saying. And I, my kids, we go to the library all the time. I, I know that crosswalk, go to the same place to get my inspection sticker, all that kind of stuff. So I, I feel your pain. I know that problem. So it's, there's a couple solutions. One is, and we've experienced this on, on Elm Street. I live on Dwayne Drive. So Elm Street, they just paved. So it's now the new raceway, yeah. the speedway, <laughs> oh, yeah. um, especially since they striped it now. So anyways, Chief Murphy's got now, you know, some speed control exercises that they're undertaking on Elm Street because people use it as cut through. And so I, I really do think this is something we should take up with the chief and, and I can promise you, you know, you might see some stepped up um, enforcement, you know, enforcement, enforcement in that right area there. because it's really not the applicants. Um, I mean, it's good that we're having this discussion, but if anything, Nick and Adam, the applicants move of a historic building 10, 12 feet back is going to greatly enhanced sight lines and i know it might not seem like much to you talking about fences and stuff but we're actually trying to improve that sight line by our comments we're not we're not uh trying to make it worse so i just if you look at these plans you'll see the improvement in the sight line and there is of course that raise in elevation but that's not the fault of the applicants they can't go change the road but we can do no, enforcement the applicant wants to add 50 more units with all those bricks. 
coming out of it. So I'm not just talking about blanks. Yeah. Well, no, but I, I, I guess if, we, if, I can, if I can say so also, I mean, Nick, so you you have 40 more trips and those are starting at a point 65 feet from that or I think 108 feet from that crosswalk. So you're not going to be at you're not going to be at 40 miles an hour leaving and then someone coming the other way or either way to go to slow down and go into that won't even be approaching your crosswalk. They'll be pulling into the new residence. So. Right. You're, you're kind of targeting the wrong, you know, net ad here. It's, it's 42 or 41 over the entire 41 day. 41 over the day. It's over the entire day. That's yeah. that's nothing in traffic. And, and the trips. people driving in and out of this building are going to be mature drivers. They're not going to be high school kids looking at their phones. Oh, it's, oh, because they don't let the them go see their old, the old folks very well. So, but, but I 100% get it, and, and I'll take the initiative actually to reach out to the chief because we were just talking about again Elm Street. So he'll be like, Oh, you again? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so but I'll, I'll take that on myself, that Nick and Adam, because yeah. uh, I, I totally hear you and I've experienced it. And it's kind of scary when you have kids holding hands, you know. Yep, well, it's, you know, I do see like here, and it's like been in the police reports, I enjoy reading them. And they see like the same vehicle. There's a couple of them that blow through the center of town. They're like Lamborghinis, Ferraris, or whatever. <laughs> and they come through the line. And if they know. can't stop those people going through here at that speed, they blue cars. You think they're going to slow the traffic here? So, you know, we could just talk about this all night. Uh, exactly. I mean. there's like all of you that don't have an interest in this property. Well, you all have an interest, but not the interest of the public. You walk down past Adam's home, my home, go over to the harness nest, and walk down with, you see that white, there's a white car on the slide now, right? You, you see that white car? Mm -hmm. It's fully neat. When I walk, yes, right there, sir, okay. whoever's doing that. See that walk, that walkway right here? There's a walk right there. <clears throat> that, that, that's my home. When I come out of there, I can't walk down, I try to crosswalk that Adam's talking about. I have to cross here so I can see what's coming going east. Not because of again, not making fun of you, take offenses, freeze, make posts. It's not that. It's the elevation. You gotta add those cuts. And, and, and sir, sir, please report. One, one last thing then I'll stop. I did read the police officer maybe traffic toll, whatever. I had one of his code police woman, I think, park a vehicle and he walked and measured, talking about getting like a blinking sign. You think that's people? So it's it's in the documents here. Read that. <clears throat> yeah, it's in the town comments. I, I know. Yeah. I've read them too. I, I read all those memos too, sir. So let's we're, we're gonna we're gonna go on to something else uh to see if there are any other comments on zoom your your comments have been noted and i'm looking at the design team across from me and and they heard what you said there's, there's two engineers in here and, and, and the you asked for one more comment i'd like to say one more thing uh leaving here it's like 7 30 in the morning mm -hmm. taking the left taking the right the traffic i mean I'm down here and look at like school time or whatever. It's all backed up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what's, what's going to happen now? We deal with it every day. You, you, won't even, you won't even know that there's extra traffic there, I don't think. Look, that's traffic from most of the times out of town. I have trouble getting on, on Route 62 myself from Swan Pond Road because of the traffic going westbound. Yeah, and it is it it a it north running traffic. Or so. the and and it's traffic. Sir, it's the way the roads are built and the way the roads are, and it's it's for. Well, I'll lift you for my time. I know. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. And I just have one last uh, non-traffic related item, more the uh, landscape architecture. So, uh, going back to 140 Park Street, so the second property over. Yep. Um, and yep, that one. And so the backyard, our backyard, we have it fenced in the backyard, so we've had it nice and private back there. You know, ever since we moved in. So now, uh, in speaking with Bruce Wheeler uh, today and, and last year, I understand the buildings 
um, are going to begin approximately 20 feet from your property line. Then you dig into my neighbor's property, another ballpark, 20 or 30 feet. So now we're having, you know, two and a half story homes sort of 40 feet away, 50 feet away, sort of looking directly into our backyard. Uh, and he mentioned the options for some uh, landscapes we put in to help add some extra privacy, maybe row of arbor bites over our fence or, or something like that. Um, I know he said he would, he's going to be reaching back out to me um, later this week with some options, but I just wanted to enter into the record and ask about options of getting something like that secured just for some privacy in our backyard. So, uh, yeah, Adam and I did speak today, and, um, uh, and, and afterwards I, I talked to Tom uh, and requested that he uh, prepare a Arborvitae screening plan um, so we can take a look at it. Uh, we, we would plant the Arborvitae on Adam's side of the fence, which is, is one property removed. There's a, uh, it's, it's the next parcel over, but the, uh, uh, the Arborvitaes are quick growing and, and we plant six to eight foot Arborvitaes and, uh, and then being, uh, the Arborvitae being closer to him, it's going to provide uh, yes, a, 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 a really good screening, screening angle. Yeah. Thank you, Bruce. Sure. Thank, Thank you, Bruce. Bruce. Actually, uh, you should look at the, uh, what is it, green tohula of a bite. The deer don't eat that. Okay. And, they, and they grow real fast. Well, well, he's going to have them inside the fence, so the deer probably yeah, got to get there. That's the way it's in. Yeah, I had, I had a friend plant those and they grow crazy and the deer stay away from them because they have little arms on them. Oh, great. <laughs> great. So Adam, yes, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Wheeler is, is uh, looking right into that for you. you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be sharing the plan with Adam next week and then later uh, uh, we'll be sharing it with the board, you know, once we uh, get things okay. uh, further along with uh, with Great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Great. Thank you. I just wanted that answered on the record. No Maybe problem. Appreciate it. Thanks, Bruce. Sure. All right. So, nothing else in here? Yeah. You good? Yeah. You good, Dave? Yep. Thank you. Ryan, are you good? Make a new. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I think uh, this. Do we have to continue this thing? Yeah. Yeah. So we got a bunch of different yeah, things. Right. Because all I will know, I know we're not we're not we're not doing it tonight. Yeah. I mean, do we have a date for continuing? Um so well our next meetings are November first or I know you guys are looking for the concom. You know the second? And you know, we work kind of together. Right. We make oh, ours really? contingent on them, and they make it contingent on us. So, Peter, have you already filed the NRAD? Like, is everything confirmed for wetlands, the flagging, and everything? Uh, no, it hadn't been confirmed. It's been flagged. It's a pretty definitive line. Uh, yeah. It was actually filled years ago, so okay. it's pretty definitive. But we've been in contact with them, and we we're looking to file it probably within the next two weeks. <laughs> and she said she'd be willing, even if we're not a hundred percent with a little bit of our geometry or something, they'd be happy to get the process started. She mentioned that. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I, w I, w I would do that with them. Get it going. Um, the first? Um, November 1st, November 15th, and December 6th are our next three meeting dates, so I don't know what works Do you want to go middle of November, or you want to? Sooner? You want to go to December? It's up to you. On this one, what's the? Do we have a timeline for this to be annual? That we have to. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. We'll 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 so, I mean, okay. we're, yeah, we're fine for any time this summer. First, so I have a conflict on the fifteenth. Okay. You want to go to December then? Uh, I wonder if we can do the, the, the meeting soon. We could do that. Exactly. We can yeah, do that. I mean, it, it, if you guys, you know, if you know a week ahead of time, let it, let Danielle know, and we can, we, you know, we can change it and give you a new date, yeah. uh, just so we can let people. And if know something too. happens with this yeah. guy, so Tom and I have another meeting the fifteenth. Yeah. Uh, so we want to try to 
it usually doesn't work to try to do them both the same, no, the same night. No, never works. <laughs> never works. <laughs> we have enough experience with that. Not with you, but with other, with other people trying to shoehorn two together. It just doesn't work. That's what I was thinking. We can do the fifth, the, the first. That's only in two weeks, though, correct? So, you know, well, we can do the sixth, which gives you the whole month of November. What do we have? Do we have anything else the for the first right now? The only other thing on November 1st was I spoke with the building inspector about coming in to talk with us about our accessory dwelling unit bylaw. It does not have to be that day, but I figured if we have them come in, we should have them go early. Yeah. <laughs> So if you if we did the sixth, that would give them an extra week. It gives them it gives them a whole you know well not the sixth of November but the sixth of December. That's what they oh, get for oh, a whole month of November. They get like six weeks. And I think we, we should try to see if we can make it work for the for the first. Okay, uh, that's fine. Like, if, what do you think? We're not feeling like it's going to work. We'll communicate right away. Okay, Mr. Chairman. On a related matter, could we ask if the uh, town planner could be authorized to? Write a memo to the zoning board of appeals supporting or at least not objecting to the parking variance so as to those five spaces on the question. Uh, yeah. yeah, I don't. Um, I mean, we talked about it with the the other. I'm not. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure that it carries any weight. But <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but um, <laughs> I, I don't personally. I don't see any issue with that. I mean, yeah, I don't see any issue with it either, protected, especially so. since that was originally your problem. As a consensus, I would say okay. Thank you. They've been very curious. I'm the ladies on the ZB. They've been very curious about the development, so you know I'll yeah. be on that, yeah, uh, I, I, that I, meeting I, I, and I'll support. You know, you can do that. Yeah. Sure, I, I, didn't I don't know think it'll be a problem. Uh, has the application been submitted yet to the ZBA? We haven't thought of anything. Okay, I mean, because yeah. usually they will they'll send. They're, they're, they're going to send yeah. stuff to us. Anyways. We look at it. No. We just yeah. we always opine on it. We opine on it, and Danielle always writes a, a just you know a two three sentence. You know what the what our feeling was. Okay. I can send it now, but usually I Yeah, you might want to wait until you file it and then she can send it. Yeah. yeah. But let her so let her know when you file it and then Danielle will send a, a letter a couple days later. Thank you. Really All right. Good. We okay. we know where the property came from. Deb, you're a buddy. <laughs> so any else? No. So we want to we want to do this, we want to do November one, eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. That'd be great. Okay. Right. So folks on Zoom, the next meeting will be November one. Oh, everybody's got it wrong. Ryan, Ryan, eight o'clock on November one. Yes, sir. Thank you. And see Debbie and sign some minutes, please. <laughs> So, I do. Right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Thank you. 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 <laughs> he's good. He's good with flipping papers. If paper. Peter was right. here doing that, you guys yeah. wouldn't. He was good with flipping papers, though. Not, not, not the electronic. Nice like, job, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Thanks, Daniel. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. 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 That you want to grab the architect or that the lady who was like, oh, 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 crap. <laughs> <laughs> that was nice. Well, what do we got? We got anything in. left? Pardon? We got anything left? It's been a long day for me already. Yeah. Did you want to go down the minutes? I didn't do any minutes. Did we have minutes? I didn't you didn't have any minutes. minutes. Oh, I didn't have any minutes. Yeah, I don't think no, we have any. There were no minutes. minutes. Or there weren't any oh, in the folder. The no, there's nothing in the folder, so we'll do that next time. Yeah. Um. Do you have anything? Bye, Liam. Bye, Liam. Bye, Liam. Thanks for coming. Do you have anything quick you want to talk about? Honestly, the MBT committee stuff was the only thing I thought was very urgent. Yeah, and I, okay. I read it, but I, I think I'll just look at it closer. Like, I mean, if no, I, don't it's, do more, it's more if I have questions <laughs> for you. It's not yeah. going to be any, no, any no, comments, I, I would, really. I, would, I just want to get understand. Let's get into the select, yeah. the select yeah. board. Okay. I read through um, the whole thing and, and have them look at it. It's boilerplate. It's good where it should be where it needs to be. Yeah. The building inspector and stuff like that. 
some of the, I mean, uh, for some of the answers that she put in there, I really liked the yeah. case. They um, didn't, I did want to just they didn't exactly the answer. They sort of misdirected the answer away from the question. Hey, yeah. guys, one, one small bit. I just wanted to ask you about the November 1st meeting where we've um, continued the hearing until 8 p.m. and building inspector is available to Talk to us about accessory dwelling units. Wanna, for why don't we, why don't we, yeah, this is yeah, gonna save, but for poor yeah. Jerry, he's got his what, CB what meeting time, that how Thursday. Much, how much time does he need? I, I mean, it depends how much time we wanna spend on it. I, I don't think we're gonna spend more than an hour talking about it. That's I have so you wanna I've, start at seven o'clock? Yeah. I've talked to him many, many times. I don't think he's gonna say anything <clears> different <throat> than what he's told yeah. me 10 times. <clears> well, well, I think we start at 7.15, they don't mind waiting. I think what I'd like to do with, you know what I'm saying? with him, if we can, Mr. Chairman, is go through some of the things, because before they were very specific, like what's been the issue. Yep. This way it's more, we're saying, we're planning on doing this, this, and this, and getting Jerry's feedback. So okay. it's a little different approach. It's more exactly. saying these are, the, a little less. these are some of the features of the bylaw that we're trying to do. Right. Can you comment on them? So it's, and it really, we probably, on that one session, should maybe limit our comment. We could always talk about it after, during, mm -hmm. but yeah. we should limit our comments and have it more of a review of what Jerry, because we should just right. absorb what Jerry, mm -hmm. and it's all, let him talk most of the time of, of each of the bullets. Yeah. We get information, he might even give us, like, you should try to do this, and then Jerry's done, and it's not this, you know, I want to have more Jerry, you know, so it's just Jerry telling yeah. us his opinion. And then on later it. on, if we want to talk more about it. We could, right, we after, do, during, yeah. the, during the, uh, you know, the planner comments and stuff. Yeah, we can have it later on as a like a close closing comments. Yeah, you want to do you want to do an hour? You want to do forty five? I mean, you know, you know how it is. We all get here at thirty. That just flies. All you know, Bruce you know, and the gang are here. Like, we don't so. need more than a half an hour with Jerry. I'm telling you because you I, so? I can already tell you what he's going to say. Well, I mean, I mean it's because I've talked about him this ad nauseum. Right. <laughs> and he has seen our comments on the draft, but yeah. it's up to you how much time. And I don't, he's probably well, said a lot of the same things to you. It's like Warren, they if, can do if Warren almost all these things hour already. All we need, then I'm, I'm good. I'm good. You know, whatever. We the do, well, why don't we? Why don't we do? Uh, I just didn't want to rush it and then have. No, I know we don't have. There's no EDC meeting. Yet, no, because we're meeting on October 24th. Right. So I don't think we're going to be. Um, and you guys are invited to that too, right? The EDC, that, that's a... Oh, that's not the event. That's, that's the, not the event? No. The event's not until mm -hmm. November 9th. Oh, okay. Well, this um, is nice, huh? Yeah, since I'm out. Dave? Hey, yeah. Ryan, thank you. Is it nice to be able to go right along and follow? Um, it's, I, yeah, uh, we're all it's, uh, I think we're set. I think we're done. It's also, yeah.